College Football on Fox is brought to you by Saltgrass Steakhouse. The calendar has turned to fall. It feels like it on a blustery day in Lawrence, Kansas. The Oklahoma State Cowboys at 3-1 and one visit the 2-2 two two Kansas Jayhawks at David Booth Kansas Memorial Stadium in Lawrence. With Brian Baldinger, I'm Mark Folliwell. A pleasure as always to have you tuned in for Fox College Football. In the Big 12, Brian, high octane offenses and great quarterbacks usually are the storyline but today we'll zero in on what are the two best statistically speaking running backs in the big 12. yeah and for oklahoma state it starts with justice hill the junior back who really has a great skill set you know, watch him right here so patient mark setting up his blocks trying to find the alley into the end zone he scored five touchdowns so far this year and here he is in the hip pocket of the lead blocker right here trying to find that alley into the end zone and then in the receiving game i think they got to find more ways to get him the ball i don't think he's touching it enough because you're going to get that violent stiff arm from him at some point throughout the day and four kansas are led by freshman puka williams again very patient not afraid to stop his feet because he's got a whole lot of start in him and here it is again when he puts that left foot in the ground he really can get north south in a hurry and even at 170 pounds he's a finisher this guy plays much bigger than his weight as he finishes runs just like this and is as tough as they come it is Kansas and Oklahoma State. Kansas is the best in the nation when it comes to turnovers, and Leslie McCaslin has the story on that when we return for the kickoff of the Cowboys and Jayhawks on Fox College Football. Welcome back to Lawrence, Kansas, where the Jayhawks are getting ready to take on the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Well, Kansas has already shown improvement this year, but one of the biggest areas is in turnover margin. Last year, they finished the season dead last in FBS. This year, they are first. In four games, Clint Bowen's defense has forced 13 turnovers, and their offense given up just one. It is not by accident. They did a lot of research talking to guys like defensive coordinator David Gibbs at Texas Tech, visited the Denver Broncos, and David Beatty said he even took some cues from their basketball head coach, Bill Self. Guys, Kansas knows they have a small margin for arrow. Error ter turnover margin is big for them. Indeed it is, Leslie, and they have made that work to their advantage so far this year and what is the fourth season under their head coach, David Beatty. Mike Gundy is the head coach for the Oklahoma State Cowboys, the longest tenured coach at Oklahoma State, the most wins, 14 years, 117 victories, double-digit wins in six of the last eight seasons, including three straight. Today, Kansas has won the toss. They've deferred their option until the second half, and Oklahoma State will receive with Liam Jones ready to kick the ball off for Kansas. Game number five of the season is underway. Chuba Hubbard watches the ball fly over his head out of the end zone for a touchback. And Taylor Cornelius from Bushland, Texas, just outside of Amarillo, the fifth-year senior, will lead the offense on the field for the Cowboys, Baldy. And it's his, uh, it's his fifth start now as the helm of the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Coming off a disappointing game last week. They did not score a point in the second half in that home loss to Texas Tech. So he's looking to rebound in this Cowboys offense is looking to rebound and Mike Gundy starts says it starts with improved offensive line play and we'll see how the offensive line looks on their own 25 with the first play not surprisingly a running play and it's Justice Hill and he's hit hard by Bryce Tornado after a gain of two to the 27 well they want to get Justice Hill the ball a whole lot more than they did last week when he only touched it five times here he is lining up in the left slot where they'll play both backs right now, J.D. King and Justice Hill on the field together. King is the player that's in the backfield. A low snap to Taylor Cornelius and hit in the backfield. Down goes King. There is a marker down as well. Daniel Wise, who is one of the best when it comes to tackles for loss for Kansas, was Illegal involved. substitution. Defense, number six. Five-yard penalty. We play second down. Well, that hurts for the Kansas defense with that penalty being called on one of the big defensive linemen up front, E.C. Holani from Hawaii at 325 pounds. Well, here they had a man not get off the field in time. Oklahoma State uh, snapping that ball early to try and catch them and get a free five yards, and that's what they did. 
negated a play that Kansas had made on defense with a tackle for loss. And the penalty moves Oklahoma State up to second down and two. Cowboy back Jelani Woods is in motion. A running play to the wide side of the field. A cutback and Justice Hill over the 35-yard line and the first first down of the game for Oklahoma State's offense. As we look at an impact player for the Cowboys offense, Tylen Wallace at receiver. Well, he's their leading receiver right now. He usually lines up at right end. Right now, he's in the slot. And then Joe Deneen Jr. leads the Big 12 in tackles on pace right now to lead the nation in solo tackles for the second year in a row. 37 solo tackles this year for Joe Deneen Jr. He might have to make one here as a race into the secondary on that handoff for Justice Hill. Kyron Johnson at defensive end for Kansas. Second first down of the drive for the Cowboys. Well, on the tackle right there is the safety Mike Lee, but you're going to see this cut right up here, right up the middle, right behind the right guard on that play, Larry Williams. And they want to get this offensive line going. They did not play well last week against Texas Tech. It starts in the run game and opening up holes like they just did for Justice Hill. 388 yards. Justice Hill has run for this season, and he's a factor on the opening drive. He turns to the outside, and he's escorted out of bounds by Shaq Taylor, but another first down picked up. Big chunks of yardage on back-to-back -back runs, Brian, for Justice Hill. Well, I thought that they've been going overboard right now with trying to take the load off of Justice Hill. But I think after last week's disappointing loss to Texas Tech, he's their best player. They gotta find ways to get him the ball in more different ways. Came into the game leading the Big 12 at 8.4 yards a carry, averaging almost seven a pop on this drive. His longest run is 12. It's four carries for 27 yards and make a five carries now. And another first down, or at least very, very close to it, with Keith Loniker on the stop and an injured player down for Kansas as Justice Hill. Here's what you're talking about, Brian needing to get him more involved. Carries and touches per game in 2016, a bigger jump in 2017, and early this season, and look, lopsided scores and not playing much may certainly have something to do with it early on in the season, but the numbers should be higher. Well, he was, a, you know, last year they had Mason Rudolph, James Washington, and Justice Hill, and they won 10 games. They had three really dynamic offensive players. Uh, obviously, Rudolph and James Washington have moved on to the Pittsburgh Steelers, but Justice Hill is here, and he is the guy that makes this offense go is Mike Lee is down here for the Kansas Jayhawks, the safety. We'll take a look here. He is in your picture, number 11. He's got to make this tackle on Justice Hill right here from the safety position. Looks like there's some friendly fire yep. as he runs right into the back of Keith Loniker, the linebacker. And like a lot of players for Kansas, he came into the program and immediately started playing as a freshman from Landry Walker High School yeah. in New Orleans. Good sign right there. Three really good players from the New Orleans area. Puka Williams, Mike Lee, and along with Corian Harris, the starting corner, all from that great American city. Lee has four career interceptions this season. He's second on the team. It's and set. tackles. Seven different players for this Kansas Jayhawk defense have an interception this year. Seven interceptions, six fumble recoveries. As you look at Joe Deneen Jr. and Cliff Bowen, the defensive coordinator. Last year, they only forced nine total turnovers, already 13 forced in the first four games. Mike Lee came off the field. J.D. King is running the ball. Tough run inside on second down and short. That run by Hill a moment ago left them a, a yard short of the first down. And plunging down to the Kansas 32, trying to pick it up, is J.D. King. Well, watch. They're going to secure the tackle here, but the second guy coming in now tries to strip. That's Joe Neen Jr. He's trying to come in there and pull that ball out. They're working on that more and more every day, trying to steal possessions from the opposition. They've been good at it so far. The running play by King left them just a skosh short of the first down. Here is Hill looking for a hole. He found one for a first down, but a marker came in. Yeah, this is going to get a hold here Holy. on the home state. Austin, number 87, 10-yard penalty. We play third down. We hear the voice of Eddie Shelton, and he tells us that Cowboy back Logan Carter holds on third and short, Brian. Well, Logan Carter 
lines up right here at tight end. Here he is. And he grabs that jersey. It's a great call. Willie McCaleb was the defensive end on the position, and so it backs Oklahoma State up, puts them in a position where they got to throw the ball on this down. Three and a half minutes into the game. Oklahoma State's first penalty. They average seven a game, and this one forces them back now into a third and ten. A block, Taylor Cornelius rolling, throwing, coming back to the ball is Tylen Wallace, and a first down catch for Oklahoma State. Great job by Cornelius here to extend the play, rolling to his right, and keeping his eyes down the field. He's going to keep coming out this way right now, but his eyes are up, and Tyler Wallace comes back to the ball. That's a huge play, but that's what Cornelius can do. He can extend the play. Great slow motion action right there. Wallace coming back. Good block by Larry Williams helped things. Now it's a run to the outside for Hill. That was a 21-yard pass play a moment ago to Tylen Wallace, and a carry by Hill for the 22 down in the vicinity of another first down. It is indeed another first down at the Kansas 11. And what Oklahoma State is doing is smart. They're putting the ball in the hands of their two best playmakers, the running back Justice Hill and the receiver Tylen Wallace. They have been consistent through the first four weeks of being able to make big plays, and they've done that on this opening drive. Steady diet of Hill, who's in the backfield. Landon Wolf is in motion on a fly sweep play. They faked it to him, and they throw it inside and into the end zone as Tylen Wallace, Oklahoma State, an opening drive touchdown. Well, that's the execution on that drive that they did not have last week against Texas Tech in that second half, and Cornelius was a big part of it, too, on the last two completions. They're going to run Landon Wolf in a ghost motion. They fake it to Justice Hill. Look at that window open up. The quick slant right there to Tyler Wallace for the touchdown. Wallace's third touchdown of the season. Got inside of Corey on Harris. And then Matt Amendola boots through the extra point. A lot of that drive was on the shoulders and legs of Justice Hill. But at the end, it's Taylor Cornelius, the fifth-year senior, throwing the ball to Tylen Wallace for Oklahoma State's opening touchdown. Well, the execution was very good for Justice Hill and Oklahoma State on the first drive of the game. They go nine plays, 75 yards, about five minutes off the clock. At the end, they did have to go to the air. Tyler Wallace had a third down reception that sustained the drive after a penalty, and then the 11-yard touchdown catch to cap it off. Now Jake McClure from Chattanooga, Tennessee. First kickoff of the day for Oklahoma State, and it is fielded by Stephen Sims Jr. He calls for a fair catch at the one-yard line, which will place it by the new rule this year at the 25 for Peyton Bender and the Kansas Jayhawks offense. And so Peyton Bender has been splitting time this year with Miles Kendrick. He's not playing today, but we will see Carter Stanley today. And he starts the game for Kansas. Well, well, well. Carter well, Stanley. Well, what they like about Carter Stanley is the ability to extend plays because he's a better runner than Peyton Bender, and they think it against the best pass rush in the Big 12, Oklahoma State. Maybe they're going to need him today. Well, he'll throw quickly, and it's caught by Sims, and Sims is down immediately by Jarek Bernard. Bernard had 14 tackles last week against Texas Tech. Ryan, we were told Carter Stanley would certainly play today, but it's Stanley, not Bender, who's coming in to start the game, and they are at an accelerated tempo to begin the game as well with a running play on second down and five that stopped at the line of scrimmage. Well, Oklahoma State did not play well defensively last week against Texas Tech, especially in the second half. They gave up over 230 yards rushing. They know the man next to Carter Stanley is Puka Williams and leads the Big 12 in rushing. That's their goal today to shut number one down. Carter Stanley's from Vero Beach, Florida. He does have starting experience in his time at Kansas. He's a junior, but he's only thrown seven passes this year. He's already thrown two today. He's completed both of them, and the second one is completed to Kurt Johnson, Jr. for a first down on third and a long four that the Jayhawks were facing. Well, they're going to have to extend their drive, extend their series with throws just like that from Carter Stanley, the quick slant to Kurt Johnson, who leads his team in receptions right now. Good throw to Kerr. That's the 15th of the season for Kerr Johnson Jr. Receptions, that is, as Brian said, he leads the team in catches. 
Running play now on first down to 10 for Kansas from their own 39. We see Dom Williams from Independence High School in Frisco, Frisco Texas, a sophomore, no gain on the carry. Well, Kansas can play at a lot of different tempos, but right now they're playing as fast as I've seen this team play, meaning the number of seconds between a play. And they're going to go with the Wildcat, a direct snap to Puka Williams, a pitch for an end around, and look at the room that Steven Sims Jr. has to run. He ultimately is brought down inside the 40-yard line by cornerback A.J. Green, but a little bit of an interesting wrinkle for the Jayhawks offense, Baldy. Yeah, well, Sims is going to be coming around here on the little flip, and he gives a good wall here. Off a couple offensive linemen down there, and big chunk plays, and that's what they're looking for from this offense. Bigger chunk plays, 20 yards or more, and they just got one. 23 to be exact. Now Carter Stanley's back in, and Puka Williams receives the handoff rather than the direct snap as he did a moment ago. And he's wrapped up after a very short run by Devin Harper. Well, Devin Harper is filling in for Calvin Bundage, their leading tackler, who didn't even make the trip here today. Got a bad ankle, and so he didn't make the trip. So we're going to see a lot of Devin Harper, the redshirt sophomore, out of Knoxville. He had a pick six earlier this year against South Alabama. <laughs> Oklahoma State just made a lot of changes defensively. And this is the longest that we've seen Kansas take the play clock down. Two seconds ready for the snap. It's Stanley. And it's a running play off the right side. Inside the 35 to the 34. They are moving with the wind at their back right now, by the way, as you get a look at impact player for the Kansas Jayhawks offense, Steven Sims Jr. Well, he also has 16 career touchdown catches. So he's their big play receiver. They move him around. They've got him in the left slot right now. But he's the guy that they want to get to the ball. He's already got one catch. And then Jordan Brailford leads the Big 12 in sacks. This team leads the nation in sacks with 17 coming into today's game. And Railford has four of their sacks. A junior from Booker T. Washington High School in Tulsa. And there's the first incompletion of the day. And it came on third down and six for Kansas at the Oklahoma State 34. The drive stalls. And Gabriel Rui will come onto the field. He has made one from 54 yards this year. So the attempt he's about to have right now, Brian, is within his range as it will be placed down at the 42. It's a 52-yard try. And there is a tailwind behind him. And I think that's influencing them going for this kick right here. Just over eight minutes into the game, Kansas trying to get on the board. Rui's got the leg. Will he have the accuracy? It's just outside the upright on the, the right side. No good. Just off target for the senior kicker, Gabriel Rui. Well, we saw a lot of Justice Hill on that last drive for Oklahoma State. They have the ball after Kansas's drive stalls, and they miss a field goal. College football on Fox is brought to you by Saltgrass Steakhouse. Taste the certified Angus beef brand difference today. And by Ford. Visit your local Ford dealer today and see why Ford is America's best-selling brand. Good morning. Welcome to Lawrence, Kansas, to David Booth, Kansas Memorial Stadium. We play just over eight minutes. Fox College football with Brian Baldinger and Leslie McCaslin. I'm Mark Folliwell. Justice Hill carried six times for 48 yards on an opening touchdown drive for the Cowboys that started at their own 25. Taylor Cornelius completed two passes on that drive as well to Tyler Wallace. J.D. King had a carry on the drive, but it was by a large part the legs of Hill that led Oklahoma State to a touchdown. Now the speedster, the redshirt freshman from Alberta, Shuba Hubbard can't find any open space to use that speed or one of two yards to open the drive. Kansas got good penetration that time from J.J. Holmes, the senior defensive lineman, and it made Hubbard kind of bounce it a little bit, and then the pursuit caught up. For the season now, Hubbard has gone over 100 yards rushing, 101 on 19 carries after that two-yard tote on first down. Oklahoma State, three and one, one three straight at home, then lost at home last week to Texas Tech, 41-17. They pick up a first down on the slant throw caught by Tyron Johnson. And big news in, in Stillwater this week was Jalen McCleskey, who was second receptions this year, a slot receiver for him, 
decided that he wants to redshirt and transfer. And so they're without Jalen McCleskey. They're also without Dylan Stoner, another slot receiver. So we'll see who can pick up the slack from that position today. Johnson, who just caught the ball, is in motion, but they'll run it. Hill to the left side. They snapped it from their own 47. And a fall forward for a yard or two before Cody Cole is there for the Kansas defense. I feel like Kansas has some depth on the defensive line this season. You're going to see about eight or nine different players up front in a defensive scheme, Mark, that is almost identical to what Iowa State is doing. Clint Bowen kind of copied what Iowa State started last year, and they're trying to assimilate that now. Holding offenses so far, the Kansas defense, to 18 points per game and 333 yards per game, second best in the Big 12. Of course, that's mostly non-conference action so far. A hard hit delivered by Bryce Tordenate on a run through a hole on the left side for Justice Hill. Four-yard run for Hill. More on Hill from Leslie McCaslin. Leslie. Well, guys, he had six carries for 48 yards on that first drive. Right now, he's averaging for the season just 11 carries a game. That's compared to 21 last year. Gundy said that is not enough. He needs to touch the ball 20 times, but he also told me before the game, guys, a lot of the problem has been things on the offensive line. They've got to run block better. And that is exactly what he told us earlier this week. If they run block better, then that will make the offense more balanced and give Taylor Cornelius more opportunities to be good in the offense as a thrower. Here he's as a runner and a little bit short, I think, Ryan. He is short, and Mike Gundy said that Taylor Cornelius has to run more. This is a design quarterback draw all the way. Only three Kansas defensive players were rushing the quarterback. He found a lane, but he's a little bit short. Hassan, the 43 mark for 43 yard line. Hassan defense came up as part of the tackle that kept him short of the 43. It is fourth down, probably a little bit less than a full yard is what the Cowboys need. They're at the Kansas 44. Inside one, Hill has been at the line of scrimmage. He surges forward though and has it. Jelani Brown at 297 pounds as a gap beater inside on the defensive line, unable to prevent him from picking up the fourth and short. Well, here he is right here. He leaves the, the charge, and then Justice Hill drops that right shoulder right into the linebacker here, and he runs with good power, running right into the belly of Brown, Jelani Brown that time. Britton Abbott is in the backfield as one of the Cowboy backs. Shuba Hubbard, they take the handoff to him. Looking and going long is Cornelius. A flag is down. He's got a man. The pass is caught for a touchdown. If it stands, it's Landon Wolf. But there's a marker on the field at the 30-yard line. Well, that Landon Wolf has taken the place. Holding. Number eight of the defense. Penalties declined. Result of the play. Touchdown. Well, we were told, and players talked about it as well this week, Landon Wolf is a very good football player. The rest of the world just doesn't know it yet, and his double move beats the defense, Brian. Hassan defense was the defender on the play. Not much defense from him as Landon Wolf catches his first touchdown pass of the season. Stepping up for Jalen McCleskey and Dylan Stoner. Not here today. Fifth catch overall, first touchdown for sophomore Landon Wolf. Oklahoma State, two drives, two touchdown passes by Taylor Cornelius. That one to Landon Wolf. Malia is 14 0. Former walk on, now on scholarship, Landon Wolf. He's going to be thrust into a bigger role with the departure of Jalen McCleskey from Oklahoma State, and Wolf just capped. A seven-play, 65-yard drive that takes 332 off the clock. 42-yard touchdown catch. Taylor Cornelius, two completions on both drives in all four of his attempts so far. Yeah, and two touchdown passes so far here in this first quarter. Bounce back game from a week ago. Low kick into the wind, spinning and going out of bounds, and Kansas will have better field position. Uh, what Kicking team. Ball will be placed on the 35-yard line. First down, Kansas. Timeout. 
Not what Jake McClure and Oklahoma State wanted. Kick out of bounds after the touchdown. Jayhawks ball when we return. 307 left first quarter. Two drives, two touchdowns for Oklahoma State. One drive and a missed field goal for the Kansas Jayhawks. They're about to have the ball on offense for the second time in the game. And let's talk a little more KU offense and David Beatty with Leslie McCaslin. Leslie. Well, guys, David Beatty was fired up after that last drive by Kansas. He was really frustrated with his wide receivers. He did not like the way they were going against the press coverage from Oklahoma State's defense. In fact, he said, quote, guys, we've talked about it all week. Do it the way we tell you to do it. So look for a better performance from his receivers here, guys. You've seen a shot of number two, Dalen Charlotte, number six, Quan Hampton for Kansas. A kick out of bounds allows him to start this drive at the 30 five and they've got puka williams and a lot of space they don't throw it to a wide receiver they throw it to the speedy shifty freshman running back and already to the 44 of the cowboys he only had two catches coming into today's game in four weeks and i asked him if he had good hands and he said he's got great hands he's got big hands and so finally they're getting the ball in space to him and i think they just got to keep finding ways to get number one the ball puka williams he's a dynamic playmaker that went for 21 yards. Khalil Herbert running the ball. Hit at the line. Driving forward. Doesn't get back to the line. Khalil Herbert carries the ball. You know, yesterday you asked offensive coordinator Doug Meacham about the aspect of getting the ball to Puka in the passing game. And he said, hey, so far we're just finding that it's easier to hand the ball off to him. Yeah. He's run for 377 yards in three games. There's Doug Meacham, the offensive yep. coordinator. Second year with the Jayhawks. Well, they've got to answer Oklahoma State scores here. They did not want to be in this position to be a down 14-0, so this is a huge drive for Kansas. First play was good. Second play, not so much, nor is the third play. Unblocked. Delayed blitz comes in. A sack by Justin Phillips, the 20th of the year for the Oklahoma State defense to lead the nation. Well, he's the middle linebacker, and he comes on a, he comes on a stunt right here. He's going to come around right here. And it's just a delayed stunt, and it was a bootleg action, and there was nobody to pick him up. And so the best thing about that play for Carter Stanley is able to hang on to the ball yes. somehow with one hand. The junior from Barrow Beach, Florida, got drilled on the hit by Phillips, and it's third and a long way to go. And it's pitched to Puka Williams. And Williams back yeah, over midfield, but <laughs> well short of what they needed for the first down. This goes out at the KU at the uh, Oklahoma State that is 48. Well, Oklahoma State's defensive front right now is dominating this game. So they're winning the line of scrimmage. They're getting pressure on the quarterback, and they shut down the running game here of Kansas. So they did not play well last week. They gave up over 630 yards to Texas Tech. I'm sure they heard about it all week from Jim Knowles the new defensive coordinator for the Cowboys. Oklahoma State. Tylen Wallace is back deep to receive this punt of Kyle Thompson. Kyle Thompson is hit as he punts it. Now the question will be, what's the call? He is a very good punter. Oklahoma State's blocked a couple of punts this year, but in this case, they catch the kicker, Jarek Bernard, who has a blocked punt. Personal foul. Russ the kicker. Rough in the kicker. Defense number 24, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Oh, Brian, that is a lifeline for the Jayhawks. Big time. No, oh, well, I mean, that, that Thompson is the best punter in the Big 12. And that's a flagrant hit there by Bernard, the freshman, who's been having, who's blocked the punt against boys, as you mentioned. But that was so late. Yeah. And you've got to be careful. That leg extended like that. Kansas is going to get the first down here in their best field position today. They got to capitalize, but nobody has scored. Nobody scores nine offensive touchdowns quite like Oklahoma State blocking two punts against Boise in that big win two weeks ago. And one of them by was Bernard. picked up by Zacharias Green and returned for one of those non-offensive touchdowns you talk about. They're also great when it comes to the kick blocking department, punts or place kicks. They hand off, running play, quarterback Carter Stanley, who was given the starting assignment today, and new life breathed in to Kansas as a team after the roughing the kicker penalty. 
Well, here he comes. Just a read option right here, faking it to Puka Williams and taking it off the left side. And that's one of the reasons why Carter Stanley is starting today. Instead of Peyton Bender, he's a better runner. And he just ran it for 11 yards. And now Puka Williams. Williams, the freshman. Hondell High School, Booty, Louisiana, on the West Bank area around New Orleans. Tony Hall, uh, a coach for Kansas, has a great history there in the New Orleans, Louisiana area. Uh, really helped recruit these guys. They were on Puka Williams when he was a sophomore in high school and saw him play back then. David Beatty said they saw him as a youngin'. Yeah, youngin'. He, he ran for over 3,000 yards for uh, a high school and all the way to the state 5A championship game a year ago. That's the end of the first quarter. Kansas on the move, a drive sustained by a roughing the kicker penalty. Oklahoma State, two drives, two touchdowns so far. We played 15 minutes in Lawrence, Kansas. Oklahoma State leads Kansas 14-0. In the Big 12, the top two running backs are Justice Hill of Oklahoma State and Puka Williams of the Kansas Jayhawks. Their number is going into today's game. Fourth and seventh in yards per carry in the country. Leading the Big 12 at just over eight apiece. And eight is what's needed here on second down of the first play of the second quarter. And it's a throw to the end zone. And it's part of the end zone. It's a touchdown for Kansas. Kwame Lassiter. Jayhawks on the board. Don't for the second quarter. Well, Carter Stanley throws his first touchdown of the season. Couldn't come at a better time to Kwame Lassiter. Just going to run just a double move on the slot defender, Bernard, the, the freshman, and got him to bite on the play. Kansas needed that score all set up by the roughing the punter penalty on Oklahoma State. And that was Jarrett Bernard, the player that was just beaten by Kwame Lassiter on the touchdown reception, which occurs six seconds into the second quarter. Lassiter brings it in from Chandler, Arizona, and Kansas slices the Oklahoma State lead in half. Kansas's first score, a 20-yard pass play to Kwame Lassiter. How about a baldy breakdown of it right now? Well, here it is. I mean, here's Lassiter right here. And on the play, he's going to run a, a, a double move right there on Bernard. And the ball comes. Nice job of securing it as Bernard tries to recover. Kwame Lassiter's 20-yard touchdown catch, the first of his career for the sophomore from Chandler, Arizona. That's a seven-play, 65-yard scoring drive. Keep in mind, it was prolonged by a roughing the kicker penalty on Jarek Bernard when Kyle Thompson was punting. The drive installed after one first down had been picked up. Chuba Hubbard going all the way across the field. He ran out of the tackle of the 10. There's a marker down. The return started at the 5. It won't even reach the 20, and it will probably be going backwards because of a penalty on the return. Good coverage. Right now, let's check in with Sam Farber in Los Angeles. He's got a Fox College football game break. And let's keep it in the Big 12, guys. Top 25 battle, number 12, West Virginia, at number 25, Texas Tech. Heisman hopeful Will Greer to Marcus Sims for the 45-yard touchdown. Made it 21-0 at the time. Texas Tech has finally gotten on the board, but it's still a two-touchdown lead for the Mountaineers deep in the first quarter. Mark and Brian. One of the best in the nation this year, the yeah. Mountaineers. Not just the Big 12, but really establishing themselves as a force to be reckoned with across the entire spectrum of FBS and the Power 5 Conference. Well, the numbers that Will Greer are putting up is going to put him clearly in the Heisman race because it's been week in, week out, five touchdown passes last week against Kansas State. There was an illegal block on the return, so obviously the worst field position for Oklahoma State, but Justice Hill will help them get out of it. The drive starts at the eight-yard line, but a running play by Hill, breaking a tackle of the line of scrimmage, and it opens up all the way outside the 20. Well, you're going to have Tony Wise has him right there, but he does that spin move, and he keeps the play alive. Watch his eyes stay up. Now there's the spin on Wise. The eyes reset, and now the burst. Special player. 
Big Daniel Wise has 34 tackles for loss in his career at Kansas. And just as Hill spun away to keep Wise from picking up another one. The run went for 13 yards. And this one will go for 13 yards and a little bit more than that. He was 13 yards downfield before he was ever touched, right around the 34. It's where he was first hit by Joe Deneen Jr. Well, he's going to bounce this right behind the right guard, Larry Williams, as they reset here. First down run, respot right there, kind of slowed things down for a second. Two runs, 28 yards already for Hill. All day for Taylor Cornelius to throw. He's got it. Just overthrows him. Running down the middle of the field. And in great position was Braden Johnson, but just off target. Well, they're going to run him on a deep post right here. And so the complete breakdown here on the twist route. That's last week, Kansas gave up three touchdown passes in the first half to Charlie Brewer. And today, they have broken down in the secondary again. That one should have been an easy touchdown for Taylor Cornelius. Now Cornelius go again. rolling, throwing, another deep shot, and this one is on target, and it's caught, and it's a touchdown, Tyrant Johnson. If at first you don't succeed with the deep ball, give it another go, and it pays off. Touchdown, Cowboys. This wasn't a breakdown. This was just bad coverage this time by Shaq Taylor. I mean, it's play action right here. Bootleg. Little double move this time by Tyron Johnson. Looked like he was going to run the cross and then took it deep to the post. And Shaq Taylor got beat from start to finish on that play. Tyron Johnson has been in the end zone this year, but it was a rushing touchdown when he scored earlier against South Alabama. This is his first receiving touchdown, and he is behind the defense and will walk into the end zone to put Oklahoma State back up 14. Cowboys up 21-7 in Lawrence. The drive started, 13-yard run, then a 15-yard run by Justice Hill. They had an incompletion on a deep shot, and then they connect on a deep shot with another volley breakdown. Well, there's Tyra Johnson here on the play. He's going to run this double move. And Shaq Taylor is going to lose him right here. Right there, he loses him as he goes north. And now there's nobody behind him. No free safety right there. And all Taylor Cornelius has to do is throw that ball to an open patch of grass and let him go get it. Almost hooked up with Brayden Johnson. Does link up with Tyron Johnson. Kickoff, Jake McClure. End zone touchback. Kansas with the ball after the 92-yard touchdown drive by Oklahoma State. Poor field position did not slow down Mike Gundy and Mike Yersich on offense. Well, right now, with Oklahoma State shorthanded, with Jalen McCleskey leaving the program, Dylan Stoner not making the trip, the other guys are stepping up right now, like Landon Wolf and Tyron Johnson. Today, Carter Stanley has started a quarterback for Kansas. Through one incompletion on the first drive of the game. Five of six, though, 59 yards. Has a touchdown pass to Kwame Lasseter on the last drive for the KU offense. Stanley makes the throw, held on to it, and down he goes, Terrell Owens. Well, they blitzed on that play. The defensive end, Jordan Brailford, he got away from that. There's Brailford, he's coming right here. They wanted to throw, they, Justin Phillips jumped right in the passing lane when he brought it down. The team that leads the nation in sacks just got another one. They have two today as we're 17 minutes into the game. Pocket collapses, Stanley got away that time, and is thrown forward by Enoch Smith Jr., transfer from Michigan State. Six yard run. It didn't look like that was gonna be, go anywhere that time, Carter Stanley's athletic ability broke that tackle and got at least a positive gain to make this a third and manageable distance right here for the Kansas Jayhawks. 
It's a long three. That's what they need. One for three today on third downs. In trouble, and there is the Big 12 sack leader, Jordan Brailford. Well, he came right off the left tackle that time, and Carter Stanley's got to get the ball out of his hands. He's just holding it too long. Now, here he comes just on the outside, and he's going to beat Adenogy here, and Stanley's got to step up in that pocket and help out his left tackle. Railford with his fifth sack of the season. Five sacks in five games. Not too bad for the redshirt junior out of the great Booker T. Washington High School in yes, Tulsa, sir. Oklahoma. He had five sacks all of last year, already five in five games, as Brian said. End of the win, Kyle Thompson's punt is held up and fair caught by Landon Wolf, who already has a touchdown reception today. He makes the fair catch at the 39. Taylor Cornelius will bring the Oklahoma State offense onto the field as we look at today's Coyote playbook. He's already thrown three touchdowns, Brian, on well, six pass attempts. Yeah, I know. But it, it looks like it's a Friday afternoon walkthrough as open as his receivers have been. Landon Wolf right there gets behind the defense in this last one right here. Staying in there, taking a shot. He's a big hit. I mean, he's every bit of six foot six 235 pounds out of bushland texas up in the panhandle justice hill thrown down by daniel wise drive starts for the 39 and already six yards picked up by hill who's moved past joseph randall eighth in oklahoma state history and rushing yards he's over 3,000 for his career he's stayed healthy he's been consistent and uh, complete team player for Oklahoma State. 90 yards picked up today. Wow. Trying to add to it, he does. It looked like he was in trouble, but he found a way out of that trouble. Lowers his head, takes on the contact as he runs it out of bounds at the Jayhawks 40. And that's not a good sign right there. Kevin Jenkins, the right tackle, but watch his feet come to a complete stop. Now Cornelius throws a block on Shaq Taylor. There's the feet of Justice Hill. Great shot from our slow motion camera there. Just isolating the guy that might have the best feet of any running back in the Big 12. David Montgomery also a very good cutback runner at Iowa State. You just saw Tevin Jenkins, the right tackle on the sideline, the right tackle from Topeka, Kansas, just down the road. So he's out of the game for a little bit as Darius Moraney with a tackle for loss, two yards, maybe three full yards lost on the play by Hill. Well, that was going to be a counter trade. They're pulling the left guard that time, Marcus Eats. And right there, he made the play. Moraney got the penetration and escaped the block of Keys. Chuko transfer from Arizona Western. Moraney went to high school in Holland, Michigan. Moraney with a tackle for a loss of three yards. Delay handoff. Wow. Oh, what a gaping hole. Then a hurdle by Chuba Hubbard and then blasted. 32-yard line is where he's down. We saw a little bit of everything on that run for who for uh, Hubbard. Well, it starts with his patience up front. And then we did see the hurdle. He is world-class speed coming out of Canada. And he's running it again. First down, and he's got strength, a stiff arm against Mike Lee. And that opens things up for Chuba Hubbard, and it will be first and goal as he's undercut at the sideline by Corian Harris, keeping him out of the end zone. Wow, run, jumped right over Bryce Tornadin. I knew he was a track star, but I didn't know he was a high hurdler, too. Back-to-back -back runs by Hubbard. And Hubbard will have another opportunity. Can he finish off the drive? No. At least not on that play. Hit by Joe Deneen Jr. and kept a foot out of the end zone. Well, just an inside handoff, inside zone behind the Cowboy back. Habit that time. And Deneen, this is going to get looked at because it looked like he crossed the line. He's under further review. The ruling on the uh, field is the runner was short of the goal line. Eddie Shelton here will go take a look. I think he's short. I think Dunedin 
Did he kept them out? I think so. At, at the bare minimum, I would say that it's going to be hard to find an angle. Yes. Something conclusive enough to overturn it. The way the Oklahoma State offense is moving, much better run blocking. I mean, look at some of the holes that these running backs have yeah. had to run through today as we see it again. Now, I don't think there's anything here that would overturn it. Do you, Brian? No. Right now, you can see that left elbow touchdown there. The ball is clearly not over the line, tucked in between those hands there. That's the part of the review. The ruling on the field is confirmed. Second down. Well, Kansas came in today leading the nation in takeaways. They need one right here to slow this pinball machine offense of Oklahoma State down. And sometimes running backs can be careless inside the one yard line, but they need to get this ball loose. Well, it's something that David Beatty and Clint Bowen spoke to us about yesterday. David Beatty said that they've done a lot of detail drill-oriented work on trying to force turnovers, deliberate direct teaching in terms of how to do it. And if there was ever a time that they would want to do it, it would be now. Lining up in their own end zone, it's Cornelius keeping it, stretching for it after a hit. And Taylor he's kept out. Well, he stretched that ball out, which was dangerous. Yes. I thought for a second the ball crossed the line, they got pushed back. You see. Justice Hill in motion. Looks like, let's see where that ball goes. It's right in there. But that might be over. That's what I'm saying. Like, I, I think that one might be needed to, to take a look at. The hit at the two-yard line by Joe Deneen Jr. is what kept it close to begin with. Now third and goal. Cornelius looking for his fourth touchdown, just trying to play some post-up basketball to 6'7", Jelani Woods, the Cowboy back, and a marker is down in the end zone. Tyrone Miller looks like they're going to be guilty of holding. Just trying to drop this ball in the bucket to Jelani Woods. Might be a hold there. Yeah. Might be a hold there. <laughs> Wood stands at six foot seven. Huge height Passing advantage. Passing appearance. Offense. Ooh. Oh. 89. Wow. 15 yard penalty. Replay third down. Wow, they got Woods on a push off. That was the first contact before the defender had a hold of his left arm. An irate Mike Gundy looking along from the sideline. Well, let's see. You see, pushing off with that left arm, holding him off, and that's what they're calling. Trying to make the play with his right arm. Just a redshirt freshman. Mike Gundy can't believe the call. So now it's third down from the 15, outside the 15. Yeah, third and goal. Yeah. And two shots from inside the one. Weren't able to convert. Then you get the penalty. Hill in motion to leave it as an empty backfield. They'll flip it out to him. He's hit, still on his feet, and now he's down. A blue swarm to the ball led by Keith Lonaker at linebacker. And it will be a field goal situation now for Matt Amendola. That did a good job of defeating the wide receiver blocks out there to put this hit right there. Good block on the outside against Landon Wolf That's, that slowed Justice Hill up, and then Lonaker came and cleaned up. Pretty good swarm that time by Kansas, and as bad as they're playing defensively, that's that's a victory for him, keeping him out of the end zone. Matt Amendola finally missed a field goal last week. He had made 18 in a row before a miss of 36 yards last week. He starts a new streak with a 33-yard field goal that ends a drive that saw some highlight moments by redshirt freshman running back Shuba Hubbard. Oklahoma State 24-7. They lead in Lawrence, Kansas. Oklahoma State just had a field goal for that drive. 24-7, they lead on the drive was the quick and loans, the right play of the game. We said he is a world-class 100-meter runner. How about Shuba Hubbard showing his hurdling ability right over Bryce Tornado? Well, I mean, that's a, a decision that is just pure athleticism to be able to hurdle. We'll see more and more guys do that. 
It is a dangerous play on every single front when you jump over people like that. Big kick by Jake McClure through the end zone with the wind at his back. 7.05 left in the second quarter. Leslie McCaslin with a report on Puka Williams. Leslie. Okay, so get this, guys. Puka Williams doesn't have three toes on his right foot. Not something he likes to be publicized, but this came from his running back coach, Tony Holt. The first game, his foot kept slipping because his shoe was not fitting correctly. So Holt told him, look, Puka, you can go get shoes in different sizes. And Puka said, no, there's no way. I can't ask that. And they said, yes, at Kansas, you can. You can do that. He came from a modest upbringing, guys. He didn't realize he could ask for what he needed. So that first game, his first college game, he wore two different size shoes to account for that. Now they just tape it up so that it doesn't slip. Probably a problem not many running backs have. And guys, uh, he plays through it pretty well. Well, they, wow. they being doctors told him after the lawnmower accident, accident happened when he was nine years old where he lost those toes on his right foot where you're not going to play any more sports. Yeah. He was playing by the next fall. Yeah. Well, we saw Shaquem Griffin have a similar situation that with his left hand at Central Florida. Yeah. Became a third-round draft pick of Seattle, was starting for Seattle, playing without a left hand that was due to an illness, had to be taken off. Uh, these players don't understand what these handicaps mean. They, the game is too important to them. The drive for Kansas has involved two plays. No gain in the previous running play. It started with a 10-yard pass to Kerr Johnson, Jr. Second down and 10. Kansas play clock has gone under 10 seconds. Jayhawks their own 35. Quick throw, Carter Stanley. And it's dropped. Looked like it was about to be caught. Rodarius Williams, though, ends up breaking up the play on a pass for Dalen Charlotte. Well, Dalen Charlotte is the guy that transferred from Alabama, and they really think that they were waiting for him to really come on. I mean, he was one of the most uh, recruited players in the state of Louisiana and just has not really developed. And right there, Rodarius Williams gets the ball right out of his hands. And now third down and 10 for Kansas. Here comes Jordan Brailford. Jayhawks picked up the rush. Stanley steps up in the pocket and overthrows the intended receiver. To Colbe Williams down the left side. Fourth and 10. Well, I thought that Carter Stanley did a good job of initially avoiding the rush of Brailford. But then I thought he rushed the throw. And on third down, there's not much margin for error. Brailford is doing what he does, man, getting after the quarterback. Already has one sack today to add to his number for the season. Now five, best in the Big 12. Oklahoma State leads the nation in quarterback sacks. Tough win that Kyle Thompson is punting into. Takes a little bit of a roll. Hit at the 40, rolled out around the 36. Timeout on the field, 540 to play first half. Oklahoma State 24, Kansas 7. College football on Fox is brought to you by Coyote. We dig dirt. And by the Texas Department of Transportation. Don't mess with Texas means don't litter. Oklahoma State, they've had so many great running backs. You just saw shots of Thurman Thomas and Barry Sanders. Justice Hill has his 18th 100 plus yard rushing game with a 102 that he's churned out today. He's gone over 3,000 yards for his Cowboy career. Throw by Cornelius, trying to go to Logan Carter. Cowboy back out in the flat. Flag is down as this drive for Oklahoma State starts with them leading by 17 and at their own 37. Pass interference, offense, number 87. 15 yard penalty, replay first down. The second offensive pass interference this quarter on Oklahoma State and both times called on the Cowboy backs. Yeah. Jelani Woods in the end zone, and now Logan Carter. And Mike Gundy said, the key to our offense, when we're really playing well, is our cowboy back. He loves that position where they can be a tight end, they can be a lead back, they can be a full back. A lot of versatility to him, and I don't think he has the great ones yet. Running play on first and 25. A couple of yards for Hill. 
He said, when we have two cowboy backs in the game, Mike Gundy, we can play a heavy set with two wides, and the defense has to either play man on the perimeter or give up the inside run. That's what he likes about having that tight end, fullback, H-back hybrid position that they at Oklahoma yeah. State call the cowboy back. I thought two years ago when they beat Colorado in the Alamo Bowl, I thought they had that going on back then. Remember Blake Jarwin? Yeah, he's driving wow. the Cowboys, of course. Cornelius throwing it. Open on the right side is Tylen Wallace. And Wallace up near the 40-yard line. Corian Harris a tackle, officially at the 38, third and nine. That Corian Harris is just a freshman. And so he's playing off the ball, off Tylen Wallace right now, giving him too much room to work. Going into today, Oklahoma State, 41% on their third downs this year. They have gained over 300 yards. They need nine right now, and it is Taylor Cornelius. He has to step up. He ultimately went over the line of scrimmage, so he couldn't throw it. And he's taken down by Joe Deneen Jr., the nation's leader in solo tackles after a run of four. Well, here comes the blitz up the middle, and it forces Cornelius to step up. And now he's trying to keep this play alive, but Deneen will find the quarterback. That guy can get to the ball as well as any linebacker in this country. From Free State High School right here in Lawrence. Zach Seiner, who missed some time this year after sports hernia surgery, he punts, fair catch, Kwame Lassiter, who has the only touchdown today for the Jayhawks, and he comes under that punt and makes the fair catch at the 16th. You know, we were talking to David Beatty down on the field before the game, Mark, and we were talking about the wind and the conditions and all that. And he was telling us that you've got to take deep shots down the field. I mean, the, you just, you can get the interference call, but you've got to test the secondary. And so far, Kansas offense has not taken a deep shot down the field. And I think with under four minutes to go down uh, 17 right now, they've got to take a shot here against Oklahoma State. Well, the other thing that they have to do, and we see them do it right now, and look what happens because of it. A splendid cutback run. Puka Williams picks up nine, but a marker came in at the end. Holding, offense, number 67. 10-yard penalty. Replay first down. Half the distance to the goal. Well, that's the right tackle. Kevin Feeder. Yep, Feeder. So... Can Kansas overcome a negative play that puts him deep in the hole on first down? He's a transfer from Ohio yeah. State, from Ramsey, New Jersey, Jr. Kind of went to the transfer route and the Juco route in order to try to rebuild this offensive line and make it stronger. It's been under David Bate. Nice run by Puka is negated. Now a quick throw, balls out from Carter Stanley. He completes the pass to Steven Sims Jr., but didn't have a lot of room to work with after he caught it. Tabo Moniki on the stop. Well, that's, uh, you know, the horizontal throw that everybody favors in college football. You better get some great blocks on the outside if you're going to break that into a big play. And they did not get those. Just a pickup of six. Pass off target. Looking for Lassiter, it appeared. Third and 12 now, upcoming for the Jayhawks, coming up on the FS1 College Football Halftime Show. A preview of Texas and Kansas State, which will happen right down the road in Manhattan later on FS1. Plus a look at the other big matchups, including Oregon and Cal, which will be later tonight on FS1 as well. Yeah, Tom Herman's who really bounced back from that opening loss to Maryland. Won three in a row now and cracked the top 25. Big wins against USC and TCU. Delay handoff, Williams spinning, stood up. And finally stopped. Never down, but stopped. Mike Gundy from the sideline shouting for a timeout. Yep. Smart to take it with a fourth and seven punting situation from deep in their own end coming up for Kansas. Well, Kansas' offensive line right now cannot protect long enough to take those deep shots down the field, so they're going to have to find some way to max protect. 
to take a shot because otherwise Brailford is going to ruin that passing game of theirs. There is a timeout on the field, and we have Sam Farber in Los Angeles right now with a Fox College football game break. Yeah, guys, big development. Number three, Clemson hosting 4-0 Syracuse, who leads Clemson 13-7. But the big story, Tigers freshman quarterback Trevor Lawrence trying to make a play on the sideline, gets rocked. Hard contact to his throwing shoulder. He went into the medical tent, has since left. But keep in mind, Kelly Bryant, the former quarterback, has transferred. Back to you, Mark and Bryant. Wow. Well, Dable Swinney made that decision, and Bryant didn't like it, so he opted with that four-game uh, redshirt rule that you have right now. Within four games of playing, you can opt for a redshirt. That might really come back to haunt him right now. That's part of the Jayla McCluskey story, of course, yes. with Oklahoma State that materialized this week. Oklahoma State took the first of their three timeouts before Kansas State, uh, for Kansas, that is, punch it to Oklahoma State. And Landon Wolf drifting back, 35-yard line. Flag is down. Good tackle made on the return team by Kansas. 2.13 to go, first half. That Landon Wolf is a good-looking athlete, though. Getting a chance to watch him play a lot more in this game. During, during the return, the illegal block in the back, receiving team, number 32, 10-yard penalty, first down. Well, that is a story that the Oklahoma State wide receivers are being thrust into new roles. More on that from Leslie McCaslin. Leslie. Yeah, at the beginning of the season, they were very deep at wide receiver, but then Jalen McCluskey decided to transfer, and they also lost two guys to season-ending knee injuries. The most recent was Trayson Wallace, the twin brother of Tylen Wallace. But, guys, Gunny told me before the game he expects Landon Wolf to step up, which he has. He also said they would go to their tight end more. Guys like Logan Carter, they need guys to step up. And Tylen Wallace has been one of those guys. He's a guy they love because he's aggressive. He'll challenge and go up to get the ball. And, guys, he runs great routes. Been really impressed with him so far this game. You know, Les, six for 442, the numbers for the year, Brian. I talked to Tylen before the game. He, he learned from James Washington. There you go. Backing him up at that right end spot all year last year. And one of the best to ever do it at Oklahoma State. Taylor Cornelius throwing. First play of the drive. And on cue, Tylen Wallace catches the pass. First down. Marker down, though. Drive was starting at the 35. Holding. Offense, number 89. 10-yard penalty. Replay first down. The second penalty on Jelani Woods, Brian. Yeah, and there's four major penalties in the last five minutes for Oklahoma State. Here's Woods against Lonaker. You can see the hand right here on the back of Lonaker's jersey pushing him into the ground. It's a good call. Back to the 25. First down to 20, Oklahoma State. Under two minutes to play in the first half. hit in the backfield, got away from Joe Denine wow. Jr., then hit hard. <laughs> you can hear him getting smashed into <laughs> by Mike Lee and another defender for Kansas who's down right now on the near sideline. Well, well, we wait to see who that is. That Joe Denine does not miss many tackles, and it's a credit, really, to how difficult it is. He's still shaking his head. <laughs> He's like, that Justice Hill is the real deal. I mean, he's got both arms around Justice Hill on this draw plays right here. There it is. He's got the jersey. He's trying to hang on to the jersey. Everybody's grabbing. Nobody can bring that man down. He's too strong. I saw a, a film clip of him squatting, Mark. Over 550 pounds. Unbelievable. Like, he is, pound for pound, the strongest guy on this football team. And here it is. There's a whole lot of plates on that bar. I mean, that are, those are some strong legs now. And it transfers when you're breaking tackles away from Joe Deneen Jr. You know, at 190 pounds, squatting three times his weight. By the way, Bryce Tornaden was the injured Kansas Jayhawk player that needed to be looked at right along their sideline a moment ago. They're playing without Ricky Thomas as it is at that safety position.
play clock has run down all the way to a second. Timeout. Offense. Second timeout of the half. 30 seconds. Deontay Ford had gone in with Tornaden out at one of those safety spots at that nickelback spot for Kansas. Timeout taken by Oklahoma State. They have one left. Every weekday morning, Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp go head-to-head -head on the day's hottest sports topics. Undisputed with Skip and Shannon. That's weekdays from 9.30 a.m. to noon Eastern. And it's only on FS1. And again, one is the number of timeouts remaining now for Oklahoma State on second and 21. Wonder what Mike Gundy is thinking here with Taylor Cornelius. I mean, he's been off the charts good. They've gotten open receivers whenever they seem to have wanted it. Will he take a deep shot here? Second and long. Seven out of eight today, Taylor Cornelius. 164 yards, three touchdowns. Handy the ball off. Justice Hill. Well, Kansas has all three timeouts, and this is a third and a long way to go. Will Kansas take one? Yes, they yeah. will. That's smart play by David Baden. I think Mike Gundy wants to get into the locker room and chew his team out for a lot of these uh, penalties that they've been guilty of right now. Special teams, offense, defense. I don't think if uh, Leslie gets a chance to talk to him that he's going to be the least bit happy with the way this team is playing. Seven penalties, 82 yards, and that is a blemish on a first half where they've jumped out to a 24-7 lead. Hill just ran the ball again. He's got 17 carries and one reception. Wow. And Mike told us this week as we get into league play, Justice needs to touch the ball about 20 times. <laughs> We've had those discussions, and they're trying to help this offense, which has already performed very well at times this year, although they did have a hiccup without scoring in the second half last week against Texas Tech. 30-19 for Oklahoma State. Another running play. Hill. 19 yards is what they needed on third down. He picks up 11 and another timeout. Right. Second of the half. The 30 seconds in length. The tackle was by uh, Bryce Tornaden, so it's good to see him back out there on the field. So 35 seconds left in the first half. Kansas has just used two of their three timeouts. They've held Oklahoma State, who will punt. Justice Hill didn't do a lot on that drive, but he's had a busy day, much to their design, Brian. Well, He's special, and he's a hard guy to tackle, and he's got exceptional patience. And then once he sees things opening up, his feet are about as quick as you can come in college football right now. And he's just been a consistent back for him, and he got the workload that he's been looking for in this first half. 18 carries and a pass reception along with it. And what a combination. Speed, strength to be able to break tackles. We just saw the video of the squats of nearly 600 pounds. The cutback ability, the shiftiness. That's why he's had 18 100-yard rushing performances in his Oklahoma State career, including one today with a 114 that he has. Zach Seiner, good punt. Kwame Lassiter, fair catch, 15-yard line. 27 seconds left, one timeout for Kansas. By the way, going into the wind. Mm -hmm. Yes. So Kansas can't afford any mistakes right here. I mean, I would take a deep shot, but I would do it with max protection and maybe two receivers out there in the route, but they're going four wide receivers right here. Carter Stanley, as he gives the signals here. Puka Williams Jr. next to him. Oklahoma's got three safeties back right now. They're not going to let anything get, go deep on them. Only nine yards per reception is what Kansas is off averaging this year, and he's buried from behind. They weren't able to max protect, and Mike Scott has his third sack of the season. Well, just a three-man rush. Going to come to the blind side, the back side right here of Carter Stanley. He's got to be more aware. And look, right there, again, close to almost giving that ball up. I mean, Kansas should just get out of here at halftime right now, not allow any more mistakes. And that's what happens. First half ends after Mike Scott records another sack for Oklahoma State. I believe they had three in the first half. Oklahoma State 24, Kansas 7. 
the halftime score at David Booth, Kansas Memorial Stadium. Taylor Cornelius has three touchdown passes today. Matt Amendola has added a 33-yard field goal for Mike Gundy's team, and Mike is with Leslie McCaslin right now. Thanks, Coach. It seems like those penalties are allowing them to hang around. What do you say about that? It really frustrates me to have. We've had, uh, I know, I think four 15-yard penalties, and um, on special teams, we've been terrible and undisciplined, and we've got to get a lot better. We can't give them free yards like that. I do like that we have some balance on offense, and our defense seems to be tackling pretty well. All right, thanks, Coach. You bet. Mike Gundy joining Leslie McCaslin on the field at David Booth, Kansas Memorial Stadium. Kwame Lasseter has the only touchdown for the Jayhawks today. Cornelius and Justin Justice Hill, that is, have led the Oklahoma State offense to a 24-7 halftime lead here on Fox College Football from Lawrence, Kansas. College football on Fox is presented by Salt Grass Steakhouse. It is homecoming, Lawrence, Kansas, Jayhawks, Cowboys, Oklahoma State in front 24-7. And the offense, both running the football and in the vertical passing game, is executing at a very high rate, Brian. It starts with Justice Hill. They got him going from the very first play. Had his best half of football so far this year. They said they wanted to get the ball to him more, and they did. And he delivered. 117 yards, there 114 total yards in the first half. The special feet, difficult guy to tackle. And then Taylor Cornelius in the passing game, finding Tyler Wallace right there for a big play. This one here to Landon Wolf getting an opportunity in the slot. And now about this big play to Tyron Johnson down the middle of the field. Little double move against Shaq Taylor. And all phases of this Oklahoma State offense was clicking in the first half. The Red Lobster first half game summary. The stats for the first half. 329 yards of offense for Oklahoma State. That happens on 34 plays. So we're talking 9.7 yards per offensive play in the first half for Oklahoma State. Their hiccup was seven penalties for 82 yards. As Mike Gundy said to Leslie walking off the field, they had four 15-yard penalties in the first half, which was a great disappointment to him. Let's get to David Beatty perspective now from Leslie McCaslin on the field. Leslie. Well, guys, I talked to Coach Beatty coming back on, and he said to get this offense going, they've got to focus on the basics, getting those first downs, establishing the run game again, and the play-action pass. He feels like on defense, they settled down at the end of the first half, but they're going to adjust, he said. Oklahoma State will, so we've got to adjust, too. The other thing he wants to do right here, guys, start faster they will have the ball they deferred their option after winning the toss to start the game so they're on offense and that first drive on offense will start at the 25 with the touchback we do a lot of things when we analyze this game but it can be a simple game and as David Beatty says they need to get back to the basics here in this third quarter well they got a black better up front and they knew that they were seeing a defensive front that led the nation in sacks coming into this game, and they need to get Puka Williams going. I mean, that was not a good first half. They limited them just four rushes in nine yards, and they got to find more ways to keep him on the field and keep feeding him the way Oklahoma State fed Justice Hill. Kansas did not have any rushing yards in the second quarter. Six rushes, no yards in that second quarter. Sacks hurt a little bit as well, of course. Here's a running play. Kept by quarterback Carter Stanley, taken down by Devin Harper, a starter today at linebacker with yeah. Calvin Bundage out. Well, those are big shoes to feel, uh, fill for Calvin Bundage, but I think Devin Harper has done a good job at inside linebacker. Pitch play as they play quickly, fast snap, up to the 30-yard line, the run by Puka Williams, down he goes from Jordan Brailford. And Kenneth Edison Gene of four. Not quite the sense yeah. of urgency to snap it as quickly now on third down. And snapping it is Alex Fontana at center right now out of Toronto, Canada for Kansas. Rather than Andrew Tothi from Hawaii and a junior college transfer. Rolling right, throwing, and it is coming back. Steven Sims, it's an incomplete pass. There's also a marker down. That's going to be against Oklahoma State. Defensive holding. Holding. Defense, number 28, 10-yard penalty, 
Automatic first down. Tabo Mwaniki, the sophomore safety from Geyer High School in Denton, Texas. Right there. Penalty moves the ball to the 40-yard line. Really, I mean, they take it right off the field. I mean, the only reason why you hold is because you don't feel like you're in good position, and so you grab. And so he's getting an earful right now from the secondary coach of the Cowboys. I see Denry. To the 40-yard line. Oh. And he breaks the first line. He breaks he the goes. second. And there goes Puka Williams. The fabulous freshman has found the end zone for Kansas. 60-yard touchdown run for Puka. That's what we've been waiting for. That's what allowed him to lead the Big 12 in rushing, breaking a tackle right at the the line of scrimmage and then the finish the speed I mean he's just coming right up the middle here breaks the tackle and then he makes the safety miss and those are both Harper and Bradford are trying to tackle him he won't let anybody catch him looking at those defenders in the rear view mirror the whole way well around Kansas and on social media since he has gotten off to the start, he has. They've been talking about Puka Magic. And you see some right now running through the Oklahoma State defense for a 60-yard touchdown. It's 24-14. This is brought to you by the Texas Department of Transportation. Buckle up, day or night, front seat or back. It saves lives. Click it or ticket, a message from TxDOT. Well, players like Gail Sayers and John Riggins, who have starred way in the past at Kansas, in the present and in the immediate future, a guy like Puka Williams may put his name up alongside some of the Kansas football greats. He is a special young football player, Brian. The freshman just ran for 60 yards. You know, his, his given name is Anthony Williams. Yes. But his grandmother been calling him Puka since he was a little kid. It's always stuck. I like Puka, and I like Puka Magic, and he just brought some. 60-yard touchdown run. His eighth run this year of 20-plus yards. Fair catch, Shuba Hubbard. We're a minute and five seconds into the third quarter at David Booth, Kansas Memorial Stadium. And the Jayhawks have some life. I mean, nothing like a big play in a score nope. on offense to set the tone for the start of the second half. No, and that should also energize the defense that did not play well, gave up well over 300 yards of offense. As we see Taylor Cornelius, the fifth-year senior, come in here to lead this Cowboy offense. An offense that relied heavily on Justice Hill in the first half. He ran it 18 times and gained 114 yards. And he looks to answer what Puka just did a moment ago. And he's hit at the 29. Made a couple of moves, but in Bryce Tornado led a host of three or four defenders to bring down Hill after the four-yard run. Well, you're going to see just the cut, cutting ability here. I mean, just a violent cut from Justice Hill to escape defenders. Taylor Cornelius changing the play right now. And moving around to the backfield was Cowboy back Jelani Woods. Cornelius play action. The deep ball taking a shot and going up and catching and staying on his feet for several yards after is Tylen Wallace. Well, it's another one of those plays where he goes up, makes the catch, rises up at the top of his jump to catch the ball. And then stays on his feet, Brian. Well, it's going to be a play-action fake here to Justice Hill. The defense rides on Cornelius. He's just putting as much air under the ball as he can. And now they're going to give it a go here for the 15-yard line. Cornelius will throw it underneath. It's caught. Jelani Woods bumped out of the 10. Well, here's Tyler Wallace at the end of this play. Watch this. He doesn't go down right here. Again, Kansas doesn't look back for the ball right there. Corion Harris. Now look at this, the finish here by Wallace. He wasn't going down even after adjusting to that ball in the air. And that's some of, some of the things that he does best is when the ball's in the air, be able to contort his body. Four catches, 104 yards today for Tylen Wallace. Jelani Woods just caught that pass on first down. Now on second down, it's Justice Hill. He breaks two tackles. He's in. Quick answer by Oklahoma State to the Puka Williams touchdown. Cowboys drive it 75 yards. Again, they can't tackle. I mean, stiff arms, that ball, whatever arm the ball is carrying it in, the other arm is going to be pushing off. I mean, it's just going to come around on the underneath handoff here. 
He gets a little bit of a crease, good blocking on the outside. And he takes uh, Deneen right into the end zone. Blocking and tackling. Oklahoma State did the blocking part. Kansas didn't do the tackling part. And by virtue of that, it takes one minute and 21 seconds for Oklahoma State to answer a score that only took a minute and five seconds for Kansas. 31-14 in the third quarter. Tylen Wallace, a big part of that touchdown drive for Oklahoma State. He's very good at adjusting the balls in the air. And he's going to show us the Bass Pro and Cabela's catch of the day. That'll be the second one. Look at him going up, Brian, against South Alabama. He's got great hang time. He adjusts the ball in the air very, very well. Today, almost identical. And then his ability to finish after the catch to stay on his feet. Is special. They lost a special player in James Washington, one of the greatest receivers in Cowboy history. But this guy's making a name for himself pretty quick right now, five games into the season. By the way, Justice Hill finished off the drive with a rushing touchdown to tie the Big 12 record with a rushing touchdown in 11 straight games. 10 yard run, four play, 75 yard drive minute 21 off the clock. I think your point about Tyler Wallace is very good. A lot of guys, you go up and make a catch like that, you don't have the balance to right. stay on your feet. Yeah, I mean, you know, you're just all you're trying to do is just catch the ball, but he wants to catch and finish, and Justice Hill showing why he's the marquee running back in this conference. A throw on the move, an inside turn after the catch. Down goes Daily Steven Sims to Jr. Kenneth Edison Magruder with a tackle after a two-yard pass. Oh, they had two guys all over uh, Sims on that play. Last week was a home loss for Oklahoma State, but on the road where they went 6-0 last year, the only team at FBS to do so, and they lead on the road today. Luka Williams in space, caught it, but an excellent tackle, second straight play with Kenneth Edison Magruder making a tackle, first Sims, then Williams. Well, that time they had both Khalil Herbert and Puka Williams in the backfield. They faked it to Herbert and then threw the screen out to the flat to Williams and Edison Magruder was right there to make that tackle in the open field. A player who was ejected in the game earlier this year for a targeting call against South Alabama. Williams who had the 60 yard touchdown run on the previous drive for Kansas is going out of the game on third down. Jayhawks need 10. Stanley steps up, has room, decides to throw it underneath to Kurt Johnson Jr., and he is a yard short. Justin Phillips kept him for the stretch forward that he needed to pick up the first down. Down 17 here, just a yard short. Now Kansas looks like they may go for it. You see Stanley just step up into the pocket right here, trying to keep his eyes down the field to make that throw. Uh, Kansas rethought better. And with just... A yard to go. Questions about the offensive line and the ability to really win the line of scrimmage. They're going to put one of the best punters in the country out there on the field. They race Landon Wolf off the field. He's got great speed. He needed it to be off the field before the snap. It's not Wolf back to return. Instead, it's Tyler Wallace, and he won't have a chance. Kyle Thompson's punt will be stopped at the 21. 10-28 left third quarter. Justice Hill has a lot of yards today, and a moment ago, he found the end zone for the first time, and that's why Oklahoma State's up by 17. 31-14, the 3-1 and one Oklahoma State Cowboys on the road against the 2-2 two and two Kansas Jayhawks. Fox College football, Cal uh, Cowboys, that is, with Justice Hill having run it into the end zone on the last time, the last drive for the first time today. There are his numbers. His average per carry for the season was 8.4 going into today. 6.4 certainly has been productive and a hard man to bring down on this run Just to start the drive for Oklahoma State from their own 21, a gain of about four. The Oklahoma State has made some adjustments on their offense line. Their right tackle, Tevin Jenkins right now, is playing left tackle for Arlington Hambright. I, I don't know what precipitated that move, if there's something wrong with Hambright, but he's been their left tackle the first five weeks of the season. And so that means Shane Richards is over on the right side now. 
Cornelius overthrows Justice Hill. He ran away. The first part of the equation was a pretty good one in terms of just getting away from Daniel Wise. Yeah. I mean, Wise is their best defensive line. That was Keyshawn Simmons. I'm sorry, Brian. Yeah, okay. Yep. Cornelius did a good job of just getting that ball away. There's Tony Wise, 96, getting the signal right here where he's going to line up. He will line up to defend an Oklahoma State third down at six. And Landon Wolf, who has his first ever touchdown catch for Oklahoma State today, has a first down catch to move the drive out to the 41. He's just going to run just an inside uh, hook route from the slot position where he's been really good today. That went for 16. All day to throw. Cornelius. A great throw target to Landon Wolf again back to back Wolf this went deep into Kansas territory to the 20. Well both these receivers are both going to be open both Johnson and Wolf because Mike Lee fell down number 11. Wolf third straight play with Landon Wolf catching it. Mike Lee has him down at the 12 for a game of eight. You know, you never know what a player is going to be able to do until they get that opportunity. Landon Wolf is getting an opportunity because of an injury to Dylan Stoner and Jalen McCleskey deciding to transfer, and he has stepped up. And that's a great feeling for a young player, getting an opportunity and then making good on that opportunity. Has now stepped into statistically leading receiver spot for Oklahoma State today with 105 receiving yards to Tylen Wallace's 104. Now there's Hill fighting and struggling and lunging forward, trying to pick up that first down. It might be a tad short. Sean Simmons keeps him a half yard, maybe a full yard away. Well, you know, last week, Oklahoma State was shut out in the second half against Texas Tech. That's certainly not the case here today and knocking on the door for Kansas against Kansas again. They've already scored on one drive in the second half to restore the 17-point lead they had at halftime. They had no rhythm on offense in that second half against the Red Raiders. And today, they've got tremendous balance running and throwing. And this has been a drive where the passing game has been a real weapon with three straight completions to Landon Wolf. And before Oklahoma State snaps it on third and one, they'll take a timeout with 8.07 left in the third quarter. Start your day with first things first. Join Chris Carter, Nick Wright, and Jenna Wolf for the best sports show on television. Weekday mornings at 6.30 Eastern on FS1. Brian has landed. Wolf is stepping into this very productive performance that he's had today. A follow-up on Jalen McCleskey. What Mike Gundy told us when we spoke with him by phone earlier this week, he said he wasn't happy. When you have a player who isn't happy, who feels the situation should be different, I've always encouraged them to go do something else. This is way too tough and physical of a game if you aren't fully committed. And we had noticed it the last two weeks, so he's better off pursuing a different situation. And that has opened the door for Landon Wolf, yep. and he has walked right in the door and said, hello, here I am, throw me the ball. Yo, he's a young player. He was redshirted his first year. He's in his redshirt sophomore season right now. And they've always had just a, a, a great group of receivers that have come through here. And uh, some, some of them, some of the biggest stars in the NFL for a while. But you're going to get an opportunity to catch the ball here. I mean, they're going to throw it. They play a high up 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 temp tempo offense. And the quarterback has bounced back. He, Mike Gundy said that Taylor Cornelius will be just fine. He's going to miss some throws, but today he's missed very few. Hands it off Hill, and Hill is met by the Kansas defense and does not pick up the first down. And Joe Deneen Jr. and the rest of the Jayhawk defense actually force him backwards a half yard. Well, here's Deneen coming in right from his linebacker position to be able to uh, stop Justice Hill. Big hit by Deneen, one guy that shows up every week for this defense, forcing this field goal attempt by Matt Amendola. Amendola is hit today from 33 yards from 29. He is now 9 of 10 on field goal attempts this season. 
34-14, Oklahoma State leads 7.25 to go third quarter. Taylor Cornelius has a target he likes right now. Landon Wolf had a very impressive drive. Three straight catches at one point on this drive. And he also had a touchdown earlier today. Touchdown early in the first quarter. But the coverage has been loose on him, so he's taking advantage of a little switch route that time. He threw up his left hand, letting the corn dog know that he was available, catching every kind of route. The little pitch route right there, bubble screen. But he's got his hands on the ball. He's caught every one. And, and he's had good balls thrown to him by Taylor Cornelius, as you see the numbers today for Landon Wolf. I thought you just said something really important, too, about Cornelius bouncing back, Baldy. Yeah, well, look, I thought that he was bouncing some balls off the turf. I didn't think he was particularly accurate last week. The offense was out of sync, but he's seen the field well right now. The throws are off one. When we talked with Mike Gundy earlier in the season before the South Alabama game, he said, I've told everybody all summer there are two things we have to be patient with. One is Jim Knowles, new system defensive coordinator. And more importantly, we've got to be patient with Corndog because he's not Mason Rudolph. And I've got to be patient with him, too. I'm the first guy who wants things to be perfect during the games. But I have to be patient. Everybody has to be patient. Well, as good as Mason Rudolph was for three straight years in a row here at Oklahoma State, 10 wins every year and more, they, nobody else played. So they had no experience at the quarterback position to start the season. Running play, Puka Williams, and there's Jordan Brailford. Leads the Big 12 in sacks, and that's a tackle for loss on a running play by the outstanding defensive end from Tulsa. What a day here by Brailford. Just gonna step inside right here, come right from, right between the right tackle on that play to make that tackle for a loss. And slam Puka to the ground. Came into today with five and a half tackles for loss this season four sacks this season going into today and he is added to that total it's second down and 11. running again is williams for two well they have shut down kansas running game today Puka williams had the one run the 60-yard touchdown run here to start the third quarter but other than that run uh, they haven't gone very far and that's the job of the front four. Playing without their leading tackler, Calvin Bundage today, you wouldn't know it. Railford's going to move around. He'll, he'll line up all over the place. Here he is on the outside linebacker position. Delay hand on Khalil Herbert. And there is a big hit. And that is Devin Harper, who is playing. And yep. Justin Phillips as well. But Devin Harper, remember, he's starting with Bundage, who you just mentioned a moment ago, who's out. Take a listen to this. That's Big hits delivered by Harper there. No doubt. Both Justin Phillips and Harper delivering the wood there, the big wood, to Khalil Herbert. Another three and out series for Kansas offense. Just can't sustain offense right now. It's a good bounce back for Oklahoma State's defense. Oklahoma State did not have a single defensive three and out last week. Another three and out here, and the punt by Kyle Thompson trickles out of bounds. Cowboys the ball of their own 29. One more look at the hit by Devin Harper against Khalil Herbert. Oklahoma State up 20 in Kansas. Oklahoma State 34, Kansas 14, 524 to go third quarter. Let's talk Cowboys offense and specifically the quarterback, Taylor Cornelius. Here's Leslie McCaslin. Yeah, Mark, you know, early on, Mike Gundy really thought that Taylor played timid. In fact, he compared him to a young pitcher that's just trying and trying to throw strikes. And the thing they wanted him to understand was, in this After offense, you are going to make mistakes. You can't try to be perfect. You've got to be willing to air it out. And they really feel like they've seen improvement from him. The fact that he understands now he's going to miss some throws, but he's getting a better feel for the game. And clearly, we've seen that today. For the year, Corn Dog has four interceptions, but none of them today against the Kansas defense that has seven interceptions this year. Now, this one is thrown up for grabs and on cue. There it is. It's the first takeaway today for Kansas. The return by Elmore Hempstead. 5.09 to go third quarter. 
And Kansas, leading the nation in turnover margin, has their first one. Kansas ball, first down. Well, that's their eighth interception by the eighth different player on Kansas this year. And I thought Wallace at the top, I thought he was just lost track of the ball running this Dino route, trying to get behind him. I think he just misjudged the ball in the air. Yeah. And that left smack over Arkansas's Elmore Hempstead in position for an interception. 5.09 to play, third quarter, Kansas ball, their own 44. Williams is in front of quarterback Carter Stanley, who kept the ball and it squirts out. And I think Puka was fastest to it right Rolling there in midfield. The, the runner was down, part of the ball coming loose. Second down. Well, Oklahoma State was pulling that lawnmower court, trying to rip the ball out of Stanley's hands. It's in the right hand here, which is, it should be in the left hand going to that. There's Justin Phillips trying to pull it out, and the left knee was down. So good call by the officials. Second down for Kansas. Midfield. Off a turnover. An interception by Elmore Hempstead. They go to Steven Sims Jr. And it's well done by Kenneth Edison Magruder. A jersey tackle in space. First down picked up, but it could have been a lot more than that. Yeah, but that Edison Magruder's been a good tackler out in space here today. Just hanging on here against the most explosive receiver by the jersey. Pulling Sims down. Strong hands. Lucky he didn't have the old tearaway jersey. Now, between the tackles, a good run by Puka Williams. Nine yards to the 36 of Oklahoma State. Justin Phillips keeps him shy of a first down. Good block behind the right guard, Dwayne Wallace, that time. They back the ball up a yard, so it's at the 37. It's a pitch to the sideline. It's a catch by Steven Sims. He'll stretch out. Colby Peel a tackle, but not before another first down picked up by the Jayhawks. And just a little bit of rhythm here from this Jayhawk offense as they go full substitution. That's Colby Peel, just a true freshman getting an opportunity. As he signals back there, they replace a lot of good safeties from a year ago that have graduated and moved on. Pass is caught. To Colvay Williams at the end. They say the ball came out. It was picked up by Justin Phillips after yep. the Colvay Williams catch. The ruling on the field, if you couldn't hear, complete pass, fumble, recovered by the defense. First down, Oklahoma State. Well, it's only their second turnover of the year. Second fumble, and Justin Phillips caused it, and he recovered it. Wow. What a play by Justin Phillips. He strips it, and then also falls on top of it. To Colby Williams, just careless with the ball, but give credit to Justin Phillips on taking that ball away. Only LSU, along with Kansas, had turned it over one time all season going into today. Yeah. Kansas turns it over. They give the ball right back to Oklahoma State. Just a handful of plays after they had forced their first. And they had a little bit of rhythm there going on offense. And you score a touchdown there, Brian. It's yeah. a two-score game late in the third quarter. Yes. Down for the 32. Gaping hole for Justice Hill. Makes a cutback. Made Bryce Tornaden miss. And he's over midfield. Ball came out well after Hill was down. First down run, 20-yard gain, Justice Hill. Just a little gimpy getting up, but cut right behind the right guard, Larry Williams. Coming right here. Press that hold on the left side, bounce it over off the right side. Cornelius changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Bringing the receiver, Brayton Johnson, across the formation. J.D. King running the ball. Bent the hole by Bryce Tornade. Tornade yeah. just knifing in. Good tackle that time by Tornade. Take him right off his feet. Two-yard loss now for second and 12, with 245 remaining in the third quarter. The three and one of Oklahoma State Cowboys. Second and 12 from the 50. Ranked for some of the year, but falling out of the top 25 after last week's loss to Texas Tech. Play action, bullet throw, Taylor Cornelius looking for Tylen Wallace, couldn't hang on. The pass is incomplete, intended for Tylen Wallace. Yeah, that's Keith Loniker Jr. getting over there to get that ball out of Wallace's hands. 
it's there. <laughs> Look how bad he wants that ball. Kansas just pulling it away from him. Setting up this third and long here. They have not done a good job of getting pressure on Taylor Cornelius today. Do they come with a blitz just to try to rush the throw? Orion Harris was part of breaking up that attempt by Tyler Wallace. Here comes the pressure. Flushed out of the pocket. A big block by Tevin Jenkins. And that at least gives Cornelius the room to run up to the sideline and pick up a yard and then step out of bounds. Exactly right. Tevin Jenkins just freeing up Taylor Cornelius, who is pretty mobile at his size. See the block coming in from your left side right there. Legal block right in the side. Took out Azur yep. Kamara. <laughs> Jenkins' body flying. Oh, that's a good pancake block. Knockdown. They'll get mentioned in the film room tomorrow. You know, he, he started at right tackle. He's flipped over. We mentioned it. Yep. To the left tackle spot here today. Zach Siner with the punt. Kwame Lasseter. Let it bounce. And into the end zone. With 1.56 left in the third quarter, we go to Sam Farber now in Los Angeles with a Fox College football game break. Trouble in Clemson. Freshman quarterback Trevor Lawrence out for the rest of the game after taking a hard hit in the first half. Kelly Bryant has announced he's transferring, so Chase Bryce is the next man up. And you see here, Syracuse Trill Williams has picked him off already. 4-0 and o Syracuse currently leading number three Clemson 16-13 late in the third quarter. Mark and... Wow. Well, that certainly is a score worth watching for yes. the remainder of that game. Here we have 156 left in the third. Oklahoma State, 34-14. They lead. Kansas has the ball. To the outside, Cooper Williams turns the corner. Forced out by Jarek Bernard. Not many guys can go east-west and still gain five yards unless you've got tremendous speed like Puka has. Just outrunning the pursuit of the defense. They just got to keep feeding them. I think they need to throw it to a mortar. Doug Meacham told us yesterday his hands are huge. Just big old baseball mitts out there. He's a good receiver. They need to throw to him more. Doug Meacham said you can have two kind of players. You can have big guys that play little, or you can have somebody like Puka, a little guy that plays big. They are pressing their wide receivers on the outside. There it is. There's the hole for Puka Williams. Over the 30 for a first down. Tackle by Justin Phillips. First down picked up by Williams and the Kansas Jayhawk offense. Yeah, I mean, just going to come right off the left side here. Right behind Malik Clark, the left guard. Adenogy, the left tackle. Look, meets him upstairs. The bird's eye view of his offense here, trying to put a drive together. From the 32, Williams again. Hit in the hole once by Justin Phillips, and down he goes. By the way, Meacham did yesterday after he made that statement to us, he did alter it after that. He said, well, I guess there are more than two kinds of players. You can have the guy that everybody wants, which is the big guy that plays big. Yeah, that's true, too. They don't have many of those guys on the Kansas roster. Give me the little guys who play big. Not good when you have the big guys who play little, but everybody wants the big guys who play big. Well, they've had him here. John Riggins was one of those guys. Second down and nine. Pass. Carter Stanley. Over to Steven Sims. Steven Sims. Able to keep that play going. Running away from the pursuit to the 50 to the 49. Might have got a good block on the outside here. Stanley throwing that ball to the sideline. Good block that time by Kurt Johnson, Jr. And now Kansas, late third quarter, snapping it quickly. Staying on his feet, Stanley blocks for Steven Sims. And Sims dives and stretches out. Ball came out after he hit the ground. That's out to the 40. Maybe a little short of the first down. I think they need to make the bubble screen right now and then take a, a, a deep shot here as this third quarter comes to an end. Yeah, good call. Good no call. The ball came out. Kansas moving. They have it at the Oklahoma State 40 with the fourth quarter starts right after this on Fox College Football. College Football on Fox is brought to you by Ford. Visit your local Ford dealer today and see why Ford is America's best-selling brand. 
and by Saltgrass Steakhouse. Experience a cut above with certified Angus beef brand steaks. Last night at Fog Allen Fieldhouse, basketball practice started late night at the Fog last night. Early day at David Booth, Kansas Memorial Stadium. 11 o'clock kickoff. We have played three quarters. One more left. The fourth quarter starts with the Jayhawks on offense and picking up a first down. Off left tackle, a second down and one play produces about a two-yard run. They put their two fullbacks in there that time, Hudson Hall and Capron and Humphrey, and they got a good lead block that time. Puka got the tough yards as he's closing in on 100 yards today. 13 carries, 98 yards, the number now for Puka Williams. Came in averaging 8.4 yards a carry. He's pretty close to that right now. A little bit over seven. Here's Jordan Brailford, right when Stanley was about to step up in the pocket. Brailford up? just swallowed him. <laughs> Brailford has had an amazing game today. Every phase of it, too. Their best defensive lineman has been all over the field. There he is at the linebacker, middle back, linebacker position, just following the ball. Seven tackles. Brailford has four tackles for loss today. Two of those have been sacks. That tackle for loss by Jordan Brailford has pushed Kansas back to second and 13. Right out of the hands of Carter Stanley to Puka Williams. Got away from Jerry Bernard, stood up by Justin Phillips. And then the rest of the defense charges in to blast him. Back of the 38, 37. Maybe. Uh, great pursuit. And that Jarek Bernard, I know he's had a couple of plays that he'd like that back. But he is out there on the edge. He's a hard guy to block and control. He gets off the block here of the wide receiver. Almost single-handedly brings him down as Justin Phillips comes and cleans up along with uh, Devin Harper. Jarek Bernard is a freshman from Shreveport Evangel Christian. Had a 14 tackle game last week. He's already had a block punt this year, an interception, and he's forced to fumble as well. Third and nine, Kansas. Something they must convert. And it's a throw to Kwame Lasseter. He gave up some ground, and he won't pick it up. This play is going to come back anyways. Personal foul. Illegal hands to the face. Offense, number 61. 15-yard penalty. We play third down. Malik Clark, left guard from Warren Easton High School in New Orleans. Well, let's see what... Uh, there it is. That's it's a good call. I mean, you can get your hands underneath there, but you got to get them off. And he won't get them off of Trey Carter. He leaves them there, and then the flag comes down. Now, that was going to end up being fourth in a yard. Kansas yeah. would have stayed on the field. And now we have seen that this offense has really struggled when they get into third and long. You're going to see Oklahoma State is going to play everybody back here. And boy, do they have a third and long now, third and 24. Who's going to rally the ball right here? Cooper Williams. Williams got a lot of it back. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Makes it a real manageable fourth down right now. It's to be a three yards. Yeah. No, that's a, that's a good call right there. Get a bunch of it back and... They line up quickly here. Oh, you can see the blitz is coming. Stanley changes the play once he sees what Oklahoma State's going to do, and now he counters the play. Still a lot of time left on the play clock, as you can see, counting at 12 seconds right now. On fourth down and three at the Oklahoma State 31. Stanley steps up, he throws, and open is Steven Sims Jr. Touchdown, Kansas! Just a complete breakdown by Oklahoma State in the secondary on fourth and short. And Sims takes advantage of it for his 17th career touchdown pass. The inside receiver of three. The safety. Magruder on the Edison Magruder on the play did not get over the top. And had a Carter Stanley with two touchdown flips here today. One's gone to Kwame Lasseter. Another one has gone to Steven Sims Jr. It's a two-score game. With 12 minutes to play. Fourth and three. And they get all of it. 31 yard pass play to Steven Sims Jr.
Oklahoma State has won eight straight games against Kansas. Kansas, though, draws to within 13 points when they drive it 10 plays, 80 yards, about five minutes on the clock. Steven Sims Jr., the touchdown. It is a two-score game, 12 minutes to play. Cowboys 34, Jayhawks 21. Touchback on the kickoff, and let's have a further examination, a baldy breakdown of the 31-yard TD pass. Well, here's Steven Sims Jr. right there on the play, and all he's going to do right now is just run this corner route, and the protection behind him, the coverage behind it just doesn't get there. The safety doesn't get there, and they went to sleep on the back end of that throw. They did that a lot against Texas Tech, especially in the second half last week. But that three receiver set right there, you've got to, if you think you, you've got to keep a safety over the top of that, and there was no safety over the top. And as Brian noted at the time, the 17th career touchdown reception for Steven Sims Jr. Running play, just as Hill into the backfield, wow. still on his feet. How did he stay on his feet and turn that negative into a positive, albeit a small one, a gain of a yard? Sometimes it's just the, the things that Justice Hill does right there, breaking the tackle on the play and spinning out of it right there by Jelani Brown and getting the position to get positive yards rather than setting up here second and long. After the spin, Brian Lipscomb couldn't catch him. Second down, nine. Great pocket. Long bomb by Taylor Cornelius and a marker's down. They were looking for Brayton Johnson. And they're going to... on defense here is going to be grabbing the jersey, and there's no reason to grab the jersey. Juco transfer from Kilgore Junior College. Yep. Watch him grabbing the jersey here. Flash interference, defense, number 13, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Mike Gundy likes the pass interference against the other team this time, but we were talking about to Clint Bowen, the defense coordinator, about defending the deep pass, and he right. said it's just hard to practice. He goes, we got to get better finding the, the ball. I said, do any of your guys ever play baseball? Just track the ball. Yes. Because nobody plays baseball. Nobody can track a ball. And they've given up too many big plays here the last two weeks with the ball deep down the field in the air. When you said that to him, he said, I can't believe you're saying that. I just said that to my guys in a meeting yesterday. Yeah. Have any of you guys played baseball? Running play Hill on the 41-yard line. Justice Hill. He is, you know, he came in. Averaging less than 12 touches a game. He's close to 30 right now. Like he is getting the work this afternoon. And he's getting stronger. He keeps breaking these tackles behind the line of scrimmage. 27 touches, Brian. Yeah, there you go. 26 of them running plays. He doesn't look the least bit tired either. Can't get the shoulder pads inside the jersey. He needs a little bit of help there. There we go. Oh, look at that. The, uh, the umpire. Yeah. Running backs want to get fed, and Hill has been fed today. This is the reverse. Whoa. Brayden Johnson runs into a lineman, runs into a defender, able to escape that, turn it up field. That's a wild way to gain two yards. And that's what happened for Brayden Johnson. Well, that was Keith Loniker Jr. here he's going to run into on this reverse coming back. He's right there waiting on him. There's Loniker. Jelani Woods yeah. almost made the Jelani tackle. Woods almost made the tackle. Pick up of two for Braden Johnson on that reverse. This is third and three. A vitally important game, uh, play in the game right now as Oklahoma State has a 13-point lead on the road, and it's an incompletion. Cornelius had to elude a rush. He threw the ball on the move to Landon Wolf, and it's off target, fourth and three. But he kept the play alive, and I think Mike Gundy is... Uh, he was saying that the jersey was being pulled, and it was. The crossing route was being pulled by Mike Lee or by uh, Bryce Tornadin right there. They did not call it. And for, I think, the first time here in the second half, Oklahoma State's going to have a punt. Ten minutes left as Zach Siner is on the field. Into the win. Got a good roll, though. Kept oh, it low. Yep. 
That's a Lynx golf punt. Bump and run, keep it low, out of the wind. Kansas needs another one of those, but they're a long way away to start this drive. 34-21 Oklahoma State, 9.50 left as we have today's Saltgrass Steakhouse game summary. Taylor Cornelius and the Oklahoma State offense, two yards shy of 500 yards today. Kansas, 302 total yards. Both teams a turnover in the second half. And with 9.50 left, Kansas the ball after a 46-yard punt by Zach Siner. Jayhawks, their own six. Quick throw. Sims, who just caught the touchdown pass, can't escape Kenneth Edison McGruder, who's been a very solid tackler for the Oklahoma State defense in the second half. Sure has, and most of them have been in the open field. But he stayed on his feet. He's seen the target. And uh, as soon as he gets his hands on the receiver, he's got a whole bunch of help coming his way. Good rallying to the football. Kansas has to go 94 yards. They just picked up the first three. A couple more on a keeper by Carter Stanley, hit hard by Devin Harper. Devin Harper's done a good job of filling in for Calvin Bundage today. Devin Harper's from Knoxville, Tennessee. Had a pick six against South Alabama this year. 24-yard run back. Jim Knowles, defensive coordinator. Was the defensive coordinator at Duke? Yeah. Undefeated Duke. 21st ranked Duke. Third down, five. Flush to the pocket. Stanley on the run. Throws it off balance. There's a marker down. The pass is incomplete. There's an Oklahoma State player who has his helmet off, Trey Carter. Yeah. That usually goes against the offense. Personal foul. Hands to the face. Number 61 offense. The penalties declined. Number 99 of the defense is allowed to stay in the game. It's the same two players involved yeah. in that penalty a moment ago, Brian. Yeah, I mean, you have to learn from your mistakes. So Malik Clark is in that melee right there and again he, he knocks the helmet right off of Trey Carter by keeping that hand up there in the face Carter is from Pinkston High School in Dallas 835 left nothing could happen for Kansas in their worst field position of the day they need a good punt with the wind at Kyle Thompson's back and there is a good punt back to Tyler Wallace at the 45 but he's got lanes to run hit but not until he has already run it back inside the Kansas 40 spots going to be around the 37 and 38 819 to play in the game Oklahoma State on the road they lead it by 13 points <laughs> traveling to support Oklahoma State they've had things to cheer about today 34 21 Cowboys lead 819 to go we look at the Southwest Airlines Big 12 players of the week Offense, West Virginia's Will Greer last week. Defense, Oklahoma's Kenneth Murray. 28 tackles for Kenneth Murray against yeah. the Army, by the way. That happens when a team runs over yeah. 90 plays. And then Caden Stearns, the freshman from Texas, had two interceptions against TCU in that big Longhorn victory. Oklahoma beat Army in overtime 28-21 last week. Wow, what a game. Murray with the single-game OU tackles record for Oklahoma State. Drive starts with Justice Hill running the ball. It was the worst field position of the day for Kansas. They weren't able to do anything starting from their own six. Good punt return by Tylen Wallace and Oklahoma State poised now to open the lead back to three scores. Well, Justice Hill has been the difference today in Oklahoma State. They've run the ball twice as often as they have thrown it today. The offensive line doing their job up front. This is going to be the 35th running play, to your point, Brian, compared to 18 passes. And Taylor Cornelius with the designed running play down to the 25 of the Jayhawks. Yeah, well, I'm just going to fake it here and then take it off on the read option. Just going right off of Daniel Wise, the defensive tackle, reading them. And it was the right read. And Mike Gundy said that we need to get Corn Dog running more. He's a good runner.
Seven and a half minutes to play midway through the fourth quarter. Oklahoma State, the number one rush offense in the Big 12. But now they go to pass play, and what a collision. Uh, hey, that Landon Wolf, he plays hard. Dropped the shoulder right there on the, uh, the freshman corner. Corian Harris, yeah. Watch this. A little bit of... And just ran him right over. Wolf only goes at about 175, but he's one of those guys that plays bigger than his weight. Hill, 15-yard line, trying to spin away from a tackle. He did at the first level, down to the 12. Keyshawn Simmons. Somebody jerked Justice Hill as he was going into the line. He, he, he's almost 30 carries here today. That's a ton of work for one back. And he didn't look the least bit fatigued at all. 28 for 163 is where he is now. Wow. Throwing in zone, Cornelius looking for Tyron Johnson. He caught it. The question is, is he inbounds? And he is. Touchdown, Oklahoma State. Uh, they've been working on the freshman corner, Harris, today, but this ball is perfectly dropped in like a pearl drop right here. Watch the location of this ball. Nice job by Tyra Johnson, knowing where his feet are, getting the one foot in, and then securing the catch. This perfect execution. Boy, between Tyra Johnson, Tyler Wallace, and Landon Wolf, those three receivers today from Taylor Cornelius have been outstanding. Cornelius, before that drive, had had his last three passes go interception, incompletion, incompletion. But he threw one to Landon Wolf, and then he threw another pass on the drive to Tyron Johnson. Johnson's second touchdown reception of the day has restored the 20-point lead on the road for the Cowboys. Oklahoma State has won 15 of their last 17 road games, and they lead this road game 41-21 with 6.22 left. And more out in front of them on the upcoming road schedule for the Cowboys brought to you by Logan's Roadhouse. At Baylor, at Oklahoma, at TCU, all of those games in November. Their upcoming road games. Yeah. Bedlam this year in Norman. The longest active road winning streaks in FBS. Oklahoma owns the longest, but Oklahoma State services on the list with six straight road wins. They were all last year. They were the only team in FBS last year that went 6-0 on the road. And this is their first road game of the season. The first four were at home. Where they went 3-1. and one. The stumble was against Texas Tech last week. Puka Williams running the kickoff back. 33-yard line, 6.14 to go. Good return by Williams. As you see, Taylor Cornelius, thrower of four touchdown passes today. Well, like 75% of his passes. Yeah, I mean, just a tremendous athlete coming out of Bushland, Texas. You know, was All-State in so many different sports, baseball, track and field. He was a high jumper, could high jump over six foot six. Football, basketball, the whole thing. And he's shown his athletic ability here today, four touchdown passes on the afternoon. Not a bad afternoon. Carter Stanley with his pass deflected, punched up into the air and will end up flying all the way over potential pass catchers or would-be defenders in the defensive backfield. Carter Stanley with the opportunity to start today. They have been playing Miles Kendrick, a uh, transfer from College of San Mateo, who they really like, but was banged up last week in that loss to Baylor. Steven Sims Jr. with the catch. Yeah, Peyton Bender's been the starter. Kendrick has thrown 19 passes and run the ball this year, and Stanley had the fewest pass attempts of the three quarterbacks yep. who have played. We were told yesterday that Peyton Bender and Carter Stanley would both play today. But it has been Stanley drawing the starting assignment and has been going the duration. 
by the way, Steven Sims yeah. with a career best in receptions today at 10. He'd had nine catches in a game seven previous times, okay. including twice against Oklahoma State. Just caught number 10. And this is Juan Hampton. Hampton, first down and more. Staying on his feet, fighting for the Oklahoma State 40. That's where he's brought down Stanley's by Justin Phillips. To Juan Hampton. Juan Hampton from Texas High School in Texarkana. Just the fifth catch of the year for him, but catches the quick slant and then pretty good after the catch. Stanley throws. Underneath, he has Puka Williams. And Williams fights forward for another first down to the 29 of the Cowboys. Offensive line on his last couple throws has played well. And that's, if Kansas is going to improve, that's where they got to make the biggest improvement is up front protecting the quarterback. Under five minutes left. Kern Johnson Jr. Leading receiver this season coming into today, but Steven Sims Jr. has since leapfrogged him with the big day that he's had, but Johnson hauls that in. Three straight completions here by Carter Stanley, and you can see with Colby Peel out there, freshman safety, getting a little bit of work. And timeout will come state. Timeout, defense. Second charge, timeout of the half. 30, 30 That's with 432 left in the game. The timeout taken with Kansas facing a third, or a second down, I'm sorry, and a long three. Kansas will have to play at West Virginia and Texas Tech on the road, and they won't be back home for almost another month when they see TCU here. Iowa State and Kansas State after that. Well, West Virginia, Daniel Holgerson has got a great team. They got some fleet white. I mean, we saw some good receivers here today. You know, Steven Sims and Tyler Wallace and Landon Wolf, but the receivers at West Virginia, I think, are a whole different level. West Virginia is winning big today in Lubbock against Texas Tech. 35-17 is the fourth quarter score now with the Mountaineers on top. They have been a great road team, too. They went into Tennessee and just ran them out of Rocky Top there. And they're doing the same thing in Lubbock today. Third down, long three. Stanley throwing to the sideline and Devin Harper. Stepped in front of Puka Williams. Good eyes by Devin Harper. Seeing that ball come out late by Carter Stanley. Jumped right in front of it. Didn't get both hands on it, though. Fourth down now. A fourth and three has already produced... I'm sorry, third down. Third down, I'm sorry. They have a touchdown pass on fourth and three today, but this is third down. And back to throw it is Stanley going for the end zone. And a battle in the end zone. And it's a battle that's won by Kansas. A touchdown for Jeremiah Booker. Booker did a great job of using his body to kind of bounce off the defender that time to come down with the ball. Booker, one of their bigger receivers at 6'2". The senior captain does a great job here in... Really, Carter Stanley does a good job of giving him a chance. Defender playing blind right there. McAllister never saw the ball, tried to play it and strip it. A third touchdown pass by Stanley. Gabriel Ruiz extra point, 419 left. Jeremiah Booker now has three touchdown receptions this year. Nice concentration by Booker going up, really judging the ball well coming down. They caught Oklahoma State in a max blitz that time, so they had one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. Three touchdown passes for Stanley to three different receivers, and Puka Williams give him a little bit of Jayhawk love right there. Williams has the only rushing touchdown today for Kansas. That was a 60-yarder very early in the second half, and then the touchdown passes have gone to Booker, Sims, and Kwame Lasseter. And, and right here, they, I think they've got to go onside kick. Yes. I mean, they need two possessions right here. they got to find a way to get one. I don't think that you can kick off right here to Taylor. you got to take a chance. We don't see a lot of onside kicks anymore, but I think David Bates has got to be aggressive here and try to steal this possession. And you can see Oklahoma State's got all their guys up here. They're getting ready for it. 
Side kick to the right. Huh? Now they're going to come oh. back to the left. Oh, and it's ah, done well by Oklahoma State. Immediately falling on it was yep. what? Edison Magruder, right? Yeah, Edison Magruder. I mean, he came right across that line about nine yards. The design was pretty good. He didn't get the bounce they wanted. How he went right and then came back left. But McGru Edison McGruder got it on one hop. Yeah, that's the key, Brian. Yep. He never allowed the, that ball to hit the second time. And that's a pretty good effort, though, on the onside kick. That is exactly the key, is that he did not let that second bounce happen. Yep. Ooh, Jim Knowles coaching his defense up over there, not happy with the touchdown he just gave up. Made it a 13-point game with 419 left. And this is going to be Justice Hill time. Yeah. You're up 13, you're on the road, and Justice Hill. You know, we have seen four running backs in almost every game from Oklahoma State. J.D. King and Chuba Hubbard and L.D. Brown, but they're going with Hill here. Ball at the 39. Here's Leslie McCaslin. Leslie. Well, guys, you were talking about the fact that you can't tell that Justice Hill has put in the work like he has today. Um, I can't tell down here either. <laughs> I'm not even sure that he's broken a sweat. The only evidence that he's had such a big game is the hole in the back of his jersey and the huge smile he has on his face. But, you know, even defensive coordinator Clint Bowen told us he thinks he is the best in the league. Guys, I, I'm there. What about you? Well, he certainly has been able to step up and handle the workload today. There's no doubt about that. Kansas is taking a timeout with this one yard run hill here that is by hill with 329 left in our game in lawrence kansas let's get a report from sam farber with this game break in los angeles sam yeah guys more big 12 football coming up in our 330 eastern window number 18 texas visiting two and two kansas state longhorns have won three in a row but have not won in manhattan since 2002 tim brando spencer tillman and holly saunders will have the call over on fox sports one Mark and Brian. Here with 329 left in Lawrence, Oklahoma State, 41-28, they lead. We saw Justice Hill carry it twice already, so that puts him at 30 carries today, Brian. He has been in that rarefied air before, but not often. Today's game is the fourth 30-plus carry game of his career. 33 is the most. Well, he came in averaging only 12 and a half touches a game, but this is Big 12 schedule right now, and here he goes. And he has buckled the chin strap, and he has been able to shoulder every bit of work, Oklahoma State, and their offense, and Mike Yersich has piled on him today, and he wants more, a run all the way down to the 17. If I were one of his offensive linemen, I would have ran down there, helped him up off the ground right here. Yeah. There's a, one of the big cuts right behind Larry Williams, number 56, and just jump, runs right by Bryce Tornado. And if Oklahoma State wants to stay in this Big 12 race, it'd be a pretty good idea to keep feeding Justice Hill just like that as he talks to his compadre, Chuba Hubbard. Under three minutes to go. A breather for Hill after the first down run. J.D. King to the 13 of Kansas. Well, all of the talking points right now are going to Hill for the 31 carries and the number that he has produced today, which is 189 yards. But remember what Mike Gundy told us this week. we got to run block better. Yep. And they have clearly run blocked a whole lot better today. Justice Hill hasn't done all of that on his own. He's had some great runs today, Brian. Yep. And he's broken tackles, and he's done a lot of things individually. But there have been gaping holes open up today as well, Baldy. I agree. I agree, and you know, you're looking at Shane Richards right there, the, the guard, and they've been rotating guards and tackles throughout this preseason. You're seeing, or, or seeing Tevin Jenkins there, 73. Done a nice job here. I mean, that, that's a good trip home. When your star back has that kind of a day, you feel like you had a good, a good responsibility for that. And this is a, an experienced front from Kansas, guys that have played a lot of football here. They went to the Juco ranks to try and fortify the ranks, but they've won the line of scrimmage here, and this is what they had coming in today, Justice Hill and Puka Williams. Is this what they have going out? 
those averages aren't hurt that much by either performance today. Williams had a 60 yard touchdown run to really help him in that regard. But a steady diet of Justice Hill. Pretty darn good when you're averaging six yards a carry and you've had 31 rushes on the day. You know when you carry it that often, you're obviously going to have your tougher moments. But he's had a lot of really good moments today. And here's a really good moment to end the day for Oklahoma State's offense with Chuba Hubbard getting his number called. And Hubbard, the redshirt freshman, will carry it in for an Oklahoma State late touchdown. I think Chuba Hubbard was sending a message to Mike Gundy saying, don't forget about me, please. I know Justice got his touches today, but man, I want to get on this field too. And they're going to run right behind the right tackle on that play, Shane Richards. I think Kansas looks like they're pretty worn out tackling Justice Hill today. Open things up for Hubbard at his speed. Hubbard has five carries, 57 yards, and a touchdown today. He averaged up in Canada, he averaged over 15 yards a carry in high school. But in 10 foot, 10.2, 100 meter speed, but this has been Justice Hill's day. That it has, and there are plenty of good highlights to show you from today. He has a rushing touchdown that ties the Big 12 record now with a rushing touchdown in 11 straight games. But the moves have just been outstanding today by Hill. Well, he sets up his blocks well, and then he just, when he cuts, it's a violent cut, and he snaps, and he can change direction so quickly. And then at the point, he's gonna make, He's going to make guys miss, and he's going to carry some defenders with him. He's a weight room freak, and when you look at him, he's got the body fat of a hummingbird and <laughs> muscles on top of muscles. And the muscles, because of all of that different kinds of work that he's done in the weight room, Brian, because yeah. he's not just putting up ungodly numbers when it comes to squats. I mean, you look at the numbers all across the board and everything based on what you see of his weight room work with Rob Glass, the great strength and conditioning coach, yeah. by the way, at Oklahoma yeah. State. Oh, yeah. He's all operating in balance. The thing that's amazing about him is he's a first-team academic All-American, all Big 12. Uh, like he's, he's showing up in class and doing the same type work that he does in the weight room, that he does on the field, and as humble as the day is long. Not one of these guys that celebrates, hands the ball to the official after he scores, I mean, there's a lot of Barry Sanders in him. Yeah. He, he deserves to have that smile that he's got on yeah. the sideline right now. That's that's the payoff. Satisfying day for Justice Hill and everybody on offense who's played around him. They certainly have helped him achieve that 31-carry, 189-yard day, which you saw that graphic, second most rushing yards in a game for Justice Hill. He's probably going to enjoy that uh, ice tub. Uh, tomorrow at some yeah. point because you're gonna be sore on a day like today But the good the good kind of sorts Carter Stanley throwing on the move short hops the intended receiver on the sideline Which is Steven Sims who has a career best today with ten receptions nine had been the previous best of his career done multiple times that's the guy they're waiting on right there. Keep on Robinson. About. Yeah, Robinson. That's what we asked Doug Meacham yesterday. Is there somebody in this receiving core that you're waiting on that has a chance to step up and be a threat? And it's Stephon Robinson who does have eight catches for 98 yards this year. Boy, well, Stanley's in real trouble here. Got away. Trey Carter ultimately takes him down. Well, Jim Knowles, the defensive coordinator, called a safety blitz, and he came free, which flushed Carter Stanley. I don't think he's happy with the three touchdowns his defense has given up today. But much better, much better improvement over the performance against Texas Tech last week. After eight seasons at Duke, he was hired by Mike Gundy because he said, I like to hire coaches that have been at places where they don't have the best players but have still had success. Stanley, oh, wow. Railford. Railford again, Brian. Yep. You can add to that sack total. And Oklahoma State will leave today still amongst the best in the country at taking down quarterbacks. Here he is just coming right off the edge here. Just gets a good jump, beats the snap, and Kevin Fetter never had a chance. Three sacks. And they moved around. Railford. Yep. 
through sack numbers. Every defensive lineman at every level. Look at that. Midair just taking him down to the ground. They, they move him around. They, they put him at middle linebacker and they blitz him. They stand him up on the outside. They put him down to three point stance. When they put up uh, the Big 12 Defensive Players of the Year, I would think that Jordan Brailford will have a chance for that next week. Right now we have a game break. Sam Farber in Los Angeles. Sam. Yeah, number three, Clemson has trailed Syracuse by as many as 10. Tigers lost quarterback Trevor Lawrence to injury in the first half, but sophomore running back Travis Etienne saving the day. The two-yard touchdown, his third score. He has over 200 yards, and Clemson leads 27-23 with less than a minute remaining. Last minute of this game, Oklahoma State 48-28 lead over Kansas. And next up, Oklahoma State is at home to play the Cyclones of Iowa State. They'll take a 4-1 record into that game. Two times, Taylor Cornelius has taken a knee. And that second time is enough to put an end to today's proceedings. Final seconds will run off the clock. Handshakes for players and coaches. And Oklahoma State will head from Lawrence back to Stillwater where they will play next week. And owners of a 4-1 record as they go back to Stillwater. And, by the way, one more thing. Seven straight road wins now as this one goes final. Yep. It's Oklahoma State 48-28 over Kansas. Well, Jordan Brailford defensively was led the pass rush today. Justice Hill behind 30-plus carries. We saw Puka Williams have a big 60-yard run. He did not disappoint. Carter Stanley threw three touchdown passes. Taylor Cornelius threw four touchdown passes. Plenty of offense out here today. Tyler Wallace with a big afternoon getting in the end zone as well. The Stars came to play for both teams today. Absolutely they did. And by the time the Stars got finished playing, it ends up producing a final score of Oklahoma State 48, Kansas 28. Be sure and join us next Saturday for the Red River Showdown. Sixth-ranked Oklahoma plays number 18, Texas, a game that kicks off at 12 Eastern, 11 Central on Fox. For Leslie McCaslin and Brian Baldinger and our fine crew in Lawrence, Kansas, I'm Mark Folliwell. Thanks for watching. This has been a presentation of Fox College Football coming to you live from Lawrence, Kansas.